Noe leans in and kisses you softly. Nani? Kisses you back gently. Hand moves to your cheek. Looks into your eyes. Leans forward, kissing you again. Please, don't give up on you, me, or us. Memes aside, I'm going to go ahead and slap a little warning on this guy. We're going to be talking about some heavy stuff today. So if that doesn't interest you, please feel free to go ahead and click away. And as always, before we get going, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, leave me a compliment in the comments, and make sure to check out my Twitch where I do all this stuff live and unedited. Let's get into it, little dudes. Okay, so I have all of my links here. All of my links here. Okay, and we're going to do a little speed run. We're going to do a little speed run so we can catch up to where we need to be or where the screenshots and the new leaks um, that just came out the other day are relevant and fresh in our minds, right? We want to make sure we want to make sure that we're caught up. Okay, so let's make sure that we're caught up. So we're going to start. We're going to start all the way back here. Okay, we have a little timeline going on here. Poppy and Xena, aka Jess and Xena, aka trans girl therapist. They are like a couple that stream on Twitch, then go to their YouTube. I want to show you guys. So, Xena and Poppy. This this one is Xena. This one is Poppy. I mix them up a lot, so I apologize. And I also struggle greatly because Poppy, aka Jess, aka like whatever the fuck, Poppy, um, supposedly has DID. So sometimes it's the fucking alter that's talking. So bear with me. Um, I don't have like a full fucking list of the alters and all their names and shit like that. So. You'll just have to bear with me a little bit. They, they do like long form content. They do a lot of like Twitch poll kind of shit. So they spun out of the um, Vasha's community. When we get back down here, uh, she used to go by trans girl therapist. And so that is relevant because she kind of comes at all of this stuff with, um, I don't want to say air of superiority, but it is an air of superiority. Right, where like I have expertise in this field and therefore like my opinion is better than everybody else's essentially. Um, so I have been in the process of trying to scrape to see what their actual credentials are. I don't know. And to my understanding, uh, their credential is that they're a clinical mental health counselor, but I don't really know, like, are they an LMHC? Are they an MSW? Like... I don't know. So I have questions about that, but just for the sake of this, this person is a therapist. So that is something to take into consideration when we're going through this is, you know, it's like how RGR always brings up that she's a fucking lawyer. It's like we kind of use that as like a way to bolster our uh, like our perspective, I guess, is the word that I'm looking for. It's like, well, as a therapist, you know, that's kind of the vibe that I get. Oh, well, that was actually the easiest thing that I've ever done. She's an LPC. Okay. Okay, so time traveling back to 2022, this is somebody talking about uh, being an ex of Jess, aka, or not Jess, yeah, Jess, aka Poppy, aka trans girl therapist. Okay. People discover how horrible my ex is, is so validating. She abused me for over three years and I have PTSD from it. Um, she shouldn't be a licensed mental health counselor. So Jess isolated me, humiliated me, and made me think that I wasn't worth trusting and loving. Nothing I ever did was good enough. I lost photos, memories. She made me delete every photo of any man that I had. Of any man that I had, I was not allowed to lock my phone and have my social media be ac accessible to her. At any point, I was to hand my phone over so that she could, quote, make sure that I wasn't being unfaithful. The definition of unfaithful was always changing. I wasn't allowed to have friends that she didn't approve of, and I wasn't even allowed to talk to my family. This person should not be working as a mental health professional. She may know how to come across as a nice person, but God help the people who are close to her. I'm in a much better place now. Don't trust her. She'll isolate you, humiliate you. I'm not perfect. I've done fucked up shit, but at least I haven't done what she did to me. So this just serves that we have like at least, at the very least, we have like a start of like a documented history of somebody saying like this person is fucked up or this person is abusive. So um, this just serves as a kind of foundation or like a bedrock. Um, this is what I could find the most, the oldest example of somebody saying like this person is abusive or manipulative or whatever the fuck okay so this is the earliest one that i could find so the second one okay so this is from january 2024 as you can see here i have all my links and i have all the dates that's what i'm doing this off of so they're in chronological order from time being posted um this is from a this is like later so this is this person had the experience and they're posting it later so this is willow 
making a confession saying that they misjudged Poppy. So this is a thread talking about how um, Willow went to go and visit Poppy in person. At the time, Willow was 18 years old and Poppy made them feel uncomfortable. Um, they're not alleging like essay or like molesting or anything like that, but they definitely had some sussy wussy behavior going on. So we'll kind of peruse through this. This person is basically saying, I'm sorry to the people that I let down because I listened to um, Poppy instead of, you know, people who said that she was a piece of shit. So initially became friends with Poppy's partner, Zena, and had a fairly minimal interest in their channel. Zena and I became fast friends. At one point, uh, admitted that they'd become very trusting of me and close to me, which was something that was reciprocated. Um, Zena encouraged me uh, to engage more with the Discord server and the YouTube channel. Um, Poppy in particular clashed heads with myself a few times in VC, but not in a manner that I felt was noteworthy. They were misunderstandings and usually resolved within a few hours. So I was invited over since my partner was headed to a conference uh, for their work for a week, and I didn't like the idea of being home alone. The visit was overall okay, but there's a few things that I'd like to touch on. Poppy maintained a habit of staying up till about five or six in the morning in the office, the room that I was sleeping in. So I went to go and visit, was staying in the office, and the office is where... Poppy would work and then Poppy would be up till like fucking weird hours in the morning. So this person is just saying that like their sleep schedule was like completely fucked. So this caused problems uh, for my relationship with my partner, but the lack of sleep was nothing compared to the real reason I'm writing this thread. To make it clear, I was 18 at the time. I'm only 19 now. And Poppy and I's dynamic was platonic and non-sexual. Uh, so in the first few days, an incident occurred when Poppy had been getting changed and I had been in the living room. Poppy emerged wearing a shirt and underwear and no pants. I looked away as I would naturally. It was clear. It was clear her intent was not to show off. She's 41 now. Okay, so she was 40 at the time of this happening. So 40-year-old invites 18-year-old to come and stay with her, stay in my office, but I'm going to stay up at weird hours of the night. And then so this incident where, you know, Poppy comes out wearing nothing but a t-shirt and underwear, basically. Um, <clears throat> but it wasn't weird. Uh, it wasn't weird. She was like, oh, she was just going to get pants or whatever. And I personally chose not... I personally chose to look away because I did not want to see her in any state of undress. Poppy noticed this and her response was what upset me. Poppy treated me for averting my eyes and invoked my weird asexual bullshit. Um, context, I'm ace and this had nothing to do with it. I would like to note that this uh, should be solid, obvious context, but why I'm about to disclose the numerous degrees of wrong. Later in the week, I was painting, sitting at Zena's desk. She emerged wearing nothing but a pair of knickers for our American buds, that is underwear. Um, she came into the office all but naked and sat down opposite to me. I barely noticed it because I was painting. When I looked up to greet her, I only then noticed <clears throat> excuse me, that she was top, topless and I looked away shocked. Poppy then in almost a confused tone said, what? They're tits. I did not consent to see Poppy in any degrees of undress. Uh, she knowingly flashed me while I was a guest in their homes. Zena overheard me and asked what happened. Uh, when the hilarious anecdote about Poppy exposing herself was relayed to Zena, they laughed it off. I was given the impression the two of them, or at least Poppy during my visit, thought that I was some kind of puritanical prude who would shriek at the sight of exposed ankles. But to the contrary, I have no issue with this, blah, blah, blah. I really don't mind, but this crossed a line for me that I had made clear. I'm not only posting this because of the recent events surrounding Poppy harassing her ex over a bad breakup. Um, I also wanted to make the public make this public despite my usual good sense to keep bullshit off of social media because Poppy has felt it appropriate to subtweet me in previous uh prior to me writing this thread on multiple occasions. I would also like for those who believe Poppy in regards to her ex, supposedly assaulting her to listen to me. Others out there uh, have stories about Poppy too, and I simply want people to listen and be more compassionate and less dogmatic. Oh, and I have a bit of detail to add. Poppy made objectifying comments about my body. I feel cross the line comments about my chest. If he gender feels aside, she made comments about uh, from the angle of I'm jealous of your tits because of dysphoria, but it was still making comments about my body. This felt gross and wrong. And I wish that I would have said it on the spot. Instead, I felt guilty for the way my body was shaped and I gave her a hug. I felt guilty about the way that my body was shaped. So too long, didn't read. This person is 18 years old, goes to visit 40 year old Poppy. Weird, first of all. Um, second of all, this person is asexual. As somebody who's not asexual, if I'm in the presence of like a friend or somebody and they're changing, I am going to look away. Like it's just like a polite thing to do. You know, like if I have a friend that comes over and my friend is like, oh, can I change really quick? And I'm like, yeah, if they change in front of me, I'm going to be like, I'm going to look away. It's just like a polite thing to do. Um, I don't think it's like indicative of puritanical, like, you know, weird shit or whatever the fuck it just is you know i'm just going to be respectful and look away um just from that perspective so we have this we have the first thread here the first thread of this person in 2022 saying that uh poppy was you know weird or excuse me manipulative and abusive in their relationship this thread about poppy being weird to an 18 year old and then we are going to move on to noe um and this is kind of where all this shit blows up
Okay. This is kind of where all this shit blows up. <sighs> I got fired from their job for what it's worth. Oh, they did. Hmm. Interesting. So <clears throat> big thing that blew up and these are the logs that were leaked yesterday. So the two things that we just talked about, Willow's uh, kind of experience staying with Poppy and then Arden and their experience uh, being in a relationship with Poppy are just kind of like groundwork, essentially. They're kind of establishing like um, establishing like a pattern of behavior, kind of showing that this person is kind of weird, kind of sus around boundaries and shit like that. So just laying the groundwork, okay? So the big thing that blew up, the big thing that blew up is there is this person named Noe. Okay, so Noe and Poppy had like, Poppy is polyamorous. And so Poppy was in a relationship over the internet with Noe. And they had made arrangements to meet up in real life. And so it was claimed by Poppy that they had talked about it. And what they decided was that they would meet up in real life. You know, they would they would hook up essentially. And then they would form like this a stronger relationship, basically. And after this happened, what essentially culminated in Noe saying, I'm actually not vibing with this anymore. I don't think that we should date anymore, you know, online or in real life or anything like that. I'm just not into it. Um, this turned into Poppy accusing Noe of a rape by deception because Poppy never would have hooked up with Noe if they weren't going to be in like a committed relationship following. So that was her argument, essentially, that Noe committed rape by deception because she wasn't feeling it and she wanted to break up. Um, in light of that, Logs were leaked. There was a big drama explosion about it, uh, but only some of the logs were leaked. And so yesterday, all of the logs and all of the context was leaked. So that's what we're going to go over. Um, and there's two other like little sussy wussy things that we're going to throw in there as well before we get to the logs that were released yesterday. Again, to kind of add on to this shit. Okay, the 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 shit with Noe. Okay, because that's the big nuke. But there's a couple of other things that are weird in here as well. So this is Gayfesh um, talking about this essentially. So I just wanted to walk away and never speak about it publicly again. But I've already made the choice to get involved, and with new receipts, I can't shake the guilt off. I've already engaged. I've already engaged. I can't have private regrets on public behavior. As Poppy said, I made big boy decisions. So. At this point, Poppy is going to argue that Noe, Noe Flake essayed her because consent was not informed. And then Poppy has to own that Noe Flake's consent was not enthusiastic or freely given. I saw the DMs. You badgered her into the trip after she already broke up with you. So this is a screenshot. So Poppy says, we love you. Are you breaking up with Poppy and Penny right before the trip? Please don't. Love, stop. Please, I'm sorry I fucked up, but hear me out. And so, like I said earlier, uh, Poppy claims to have DID. So Penny is like an altar. The, the, for all intents and purposes, it's just Poppy. Okay, we'll just take it from that as well. And Noe also allegedly has DID, so just take that with a, a grain of salt, okay? So Noe says, yeah, I'm breaking up with you both. I need to get back to normal. I need to fix myself. I need to be okay and not be so stressed all the time. Poppy says, please listen to us. Noe says, I can't. I cannot do this. And then Poppy calls and Poppy says, Haley, please don't do this. And Haley is uh, one of the altars, apparently. So Poppy says, we can fix it. We are sorry. No, he says, I'm over it. I do love you. Love is left there. It is so broken and shattered. Poppy says, love, please, we can fix this. I'm coming to see you tomorrow. No, he says, no, we can't. Poppy says, I can't even refund the hotel now. Please give us the weekend. We can fix this. Please, we beg you, talk to us. We overreacted. It was too much at once. Please, please. And again, it's important to be mindful that these are like message after message after message after message. This isn't like a wall of text. Like this is like boom, 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 boom. Like we're just going, 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 right? So this is Noe saying they begged and guilt tripped me to come down to the hotel they already paid for. Poppy was fully aware I didn't want to be uh, want to be with her anymore ahead of it. Zizi guilt tripped me into giving one last chance to talk. Sex was never on the table or desired with either of them. And then uh, Poppy is saying this never happened. We mentioned the cost of the hotel like twice. I have DMs. And then we see in these DMs that obviously we are like begging, shitting, pissing, crying, coming like, please come and see me, please. Okay. <clears throat> Ironically, I would probably still be friends with Z and P today, except that they wouldn't let any of their friends stay out of their constant relationship woes. We were guilted and if for not immediately coming to P's defense for a relationship that we could all tell was doomed from the start. Because of that, I was because of that, because I was asked to get involved and speak up to defend Poppy, I actually went and I looked into it. Because I don't want to blindly sign off on that shit. And when I found out exactly what happened, it appeared from the start a messy breakup that I wanted to be no part of. 
I initially was willing to help them, but their shotgun Twitter approach was just indistinguishable from a harassment campaign. Noe Flake waited weeks to even respond, and ZMP weaponized their audience and directed them all towards Noe, Noe Flake with a copy pasta. So this is their copy pasta. They're basically saying that uh, Noe engaged in rape by deception because it was not fully informed because essentially Noe wanted to break up when they hooked up. Um, ZMP retweeted a community member tagging everyone remotely involved and then only unretweeted it after I told them how bad it looked. So <clears throat> we have like a little bit more of the gay fesh and poppy going back and forth kind of stuff that I don't really care about. I just want the logs. Um, so what, end up, what ends up happening is Poppy is arguing again that this is rape by deception, basically, because Noe wanted to break up the whole time. And she repeatedly links this Yale article that actually talks about like rape by deception in the context of trans people, which is really interesting. So all of these people are like, I wanted to stay out of it, blah, 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 essentially is what it is, okay? So this is uh, one of Noe's friends kind of giving, laying out like what happened. So a mutual of mine is being accused of sexual assault by her ex and is being painted as an abuser who pushes boundaries constantly and quote, rape by deception. Now, obviously I take accusations of, a, of assault pretty seriously. And so I went to my mutual and it turns out that she was the victim. So this was a well, this was all well and good, except that the entire time it's a lie. I've been given permission to share screenshots leading up to the event where the essay happened. Reminder that this is predicated on Poppy's seeming ignorance. So these are the screenshots, the Fry's model, freely given, reversible, informed, enthusiastic, and specific. Second is that I had been a victim of sexual assault in my current situation with my ex and the area of consent violates the I or the informed part of the consent of the Fry's model. I was under the impression that we were going to be intimate as a means to finally be together after four months of waiting because we were both heavily attracted to one another. In short, I thought this was just an act of love and lust. This was even communicated during the act. As for me, I hate all of this. I hate the way that the FMOC and my ex treated my partner uh, this was nothing short of betrayal. This had been uh, someone that they were trying to help before. ZZ had regular phone calls and messages and support. Uh, they offered money, advice. I hate the person, blah, blah, blah. However, the next day she walked out and informed me that everything she had done was to test to see if she still loved me. She, in fact, didn't, which went directly against the stated goals of the weekend and the things during the act. This, The reality is that if I had known that she was using sex as a litmus test for her feelings, I never would have consented. So again, the argument here is that the eye of the fries model was violated because they broke up after they fucked, basically. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got the fries model of consent and the, you know, this person assaulted me because we broke up after we fucked. Crazy. So Noe slash Haley attempted to break up with Poppy prior to their visit and was uh, convinced over the course of hours to not go through the breakup. Her boundaries were not respected. So we looked at these before where it's like, please stop, hear me out. Like, I don't want to come, blah, blah, blah. And then Poppy's response to them saying like, you pretty much manipulated Noe into going. She says she's a big girl and made her decisions. Um, this is not only a gross understanding of coercion in the relationship, it's frankly dangerous, especially in light of the fact that Poppy is now publicly accusing Haley Noe of essaying her via deception. So these are some more screenshots. These are in the leaks. We'll go over the leaks here in a minute. Um, this pattern in the relationship every day prior to the visit, Poppy accuses Haley of not speaking up and setting proper boundaries, but when Haley does, she's convinced out of her boundaries and that she's a big girl. Um, so, Max, please. That's when Noe's alters. Noe says, yeah. Um, Poppy says, can you intervene? She's treating Poppy like shit. Noe says, she's spelling too. Sorry. Poppy says, and I'm about to start breaking things, starting with uh, calls if she can't be clear. I'm trying to understand, but she set Poppy up and now Poppy is freaking out that she that she forced her this morning and the extra call wasn't unwanted. Um, <clears throat> so the last time that we talked about this, the last time that we talked about this, I had said this before and we'll see more of this behavior in the leaks, um, in the long leaks that essentially dump all of their conversations before, during, and after them meeting up in real life. Um, this is manipulation. This is really scary, and I would highly recommend anybody that's in a relationship, if you have friends, if you have family that act like this, when you don't get your way and you start threatening to break things or you start threatening to like hurt yourself, um, that is a form of intimidation and manipulation, and that is not fucking good. That is a big red flag. If somebody is willing to break something in your presence to scare you, that person will fucking hit you, okay? Okay, so just for the record, I'm telling you right now, if you are in a relationship with somebody or you're friends with somebody and you piss them off and they start breaking shit in front of you, punching holes in the wall, like flipping tables and stuff, that person will fucking hit you 100% guaranteed. Okay, that person wants you to be scared of them. They're trying to like scare you into giving them what, what they want, essentially. So 
fuck that. Don't do that. Don't ever let people do that to you, okay? So this is victim blaming. This is abuse. Let me be very clear. I'm involved because Poppy has continued to talk and harass Haley, including going to unrelated mutuals and calling Haley an abuser and an essayer. So literally lying in broad daylight. No one pressured anybody. We read the logs. There was pressure, essentially. Um, so this is the hotel screenshot that we already read. So this is uh, Farron talking to Poppy. So now I try to speak with Poppy about all this. And I pointed out how this is not okay behavior. And her response was to tell me that she doesn't see this as a problem at all. So... Baron says, because you say this about her and yet, I see the opposite is clear as day, so please explain. It's over. Love, please. Can we fix this? I am coming to see you tomorrow. No, we can't. I'm really struggling here. Do you see how I am struggling? I am breaking up with you both. And then Poppy says, no, not really. <laughs> Giga Chad. Okay. So, which leads me to this, which is frankly really fucking confusing. Uh, Poppy is pretty adamant that Amy and Haley's relationship caused her suicidal thoughts. A pretty serious accusation on, on top of the essay, which again, the events surrounding were publicly lied about. So, Amy is Noe's like, primary partner or whatever. And Amy says, screaming because it's the one year anniversary of Noe and I getting together. Happy screams. And then Poppy retweets this and says... God, these two are disgusting. Amy is the partner who was causing my suicide ideations because of her lies and Noe broke up with her because of the harm it was doing. And then when we broke up, she immediately got back with her. These two are repugnant liars. If somebody, if your ex getting into a relationship with somebody other than you causes you suicidal ideation, you should be locked away from general society for like the rest of your fucking life. Like if you cannot handle somebody who is no longer your intimate partner being in relationships with other people, um, not even in a sense of like, I care about them and I'm worried about them in a sense where like, I'm going to hurt myself because of your choices. We've got some fucking issues, right? <clears throat> so this is apparently the reason for that. Look, Poppy had a lot of issues, and that's part of the reason why I hesitated to do this and spoke with her first. But you do not get to blame your partner for causing you to have suicidal ideations. Like, this is weaponizing SI. So here are some more logs. So Poppy says, that was a mess. Noe says, it still worked out pretty well, all things considered. Poppy says, not on my end. I was a wreck. Noe says, oh, fuck. Poppy says, she was fine. Sora was fine. I had suicidal ideation. That Sunday was so bad, I basically laid in ZZ's arms, bawling and wanting to end my life. Noe says, shit, I'm sorry, Poppy. Poppy says, do you get it now? This is what I mean by gambling with my mental health. The desire for me to interact and the value that metamors should. So the metamor is the word for um, for like your your polyamorous partner's other fucking partner is what that word is. It's a metamor. I didn't know that. I learned that yesterday. You guys are fucking weird with your degen shit or whatever. Anyway. <clears throat> It means seeing my partner with their partner, which will trigger intrusive thoughts and ideations. This is what I mean when I say uh, that shit needs to be done slow and with the intention that it has to be a decision by both of us. She gets un she gets to be uncomfortable. I get to be hurt and potentially hurt myself. The issue here is very real. So this, again, is somebody who obviously is very mentally unwell. Um, and this is incredibly manipulative, right? Because this is essentially because Noe got back together with her ex. And it's like, do you get it now? You're gambling with my mental health. I have a right to hurt myself because of your actions, because you upset me. I'm going to hurt myself. Clinically unwell. Additionally, if you're somebody who's in like a polyamorous, rela polyamorous relationship and seeing your polyamorous partner with another partner triggers you to the point where you want to hurt or kill yourself you should not be engaged in polyamorous polyamorous relationships full stop like obviously that's not healthy for you obviously you can't fucking handle that okay so again i'm not listen we all have our opinions on you know polyamory and open relationships and shit like that i personally don't vibe with vibe with it whatever but sitting on the outside looking at somebody who claims that polyamory is like this big beneficial like happy love puddle or whatever and you are threatening to hurt yourself because your partner has another partner why are you even engaged in polyamory if it makes you that upset why are you dating people who are dating other people just be monogamous it's like the one-sided like i want to be poly and have like 10 girlfriends but you can only date me that's the vibe that this gives right very very uncomfy <laughs> Um, okay, so quite frankly, emotional blackmail. I've been here before, like we said. Um, this is absolute horseshit, by the way. If anybody ever tells you this, run for the fucking hills. I'm very sympathetic to people with BPD, but this is just excusing ex abusive behavior, dodging accountability, and emotionally blackmailing your partner. So this is a screenshot of Poppy saying, Metamors with BPD, 
need special considerations. So because I have BPD and because I'm mentally ill, that means that you can't have another partner or you can't post pictures of your other partner or you can't talk about your other partner. Otherwise, it will trigger me into like wanting to fucking blow my head off. Like, no, bro. No, bro. You just need to not engage in polyamory if that's kind of where we're at with this. So speaking of, it should be noted that Haley's also has uh, many mental health struggles. So uh, kind of going on that both of these people have their own issues going on. So saying like, I'm too mentally ill to deal with this to somebody who is also mentally ill. It's kind of like, okay, but both of you guys are struggling. So like, why are your struggles more valid than like this person's, right? Um, so that's that thread. That's that thread. So <clears throat> we have thus far... The account of the ex-partner saying that Poppy is like manipulative and abusive. We have Willow and their kind of weird experience with Poppy. Um, we have Gay Fesh's perspective on, you know, people asking Poppy to get involved in her internet drama and her internet relationships and shit and defend her publicly. Um, we have Poppy saying that Noe essentially raped her by deception by breaking up with her after they had slept together, even though in the logs it shows that Noe wasn't feeling it before they even met up and hooked up in person. Um, and then we have Poppy's kind of like cold indifference to people saying like, this obviously doesn't look good for you. Um, obviously like saying that this is rape by deception because you guys broke up is, is not really the, not really the vibe, uh, so to speak. And we also see that Poppy is willing to weaponize, uh, mental health issues in order to kind of control a situation and kind of get her way, um, in this situation. So that's, that's where we're at so far. I really can't believe, uh, this person is 41. It sounds like a 16 year old in their first relationship. So this is a fun little like personal anecdote, okay? Um, a lot of my friends like to date older men and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with dating older men, obviously. But um, a lot of the guys that my friends date, like they kind of have some issues, you know what I mean? Who doesn't in this day and age, of course. But when you come across somebody who's 45 and they have like these deep seated issues, that's how they're gonna be for the rest of their life. Like you're not gonna fix that person. And at 45, that person doesn't really have a lot of um, momentum to fix themselves, especially if we're talking about really deep seated issues that 45 years later, they're just now starting to realize is a problem. Um, I would highly recommend um, for relationship advice, if you care to, to take it, if you encounter somebody that requires an exorbitant amount of work to be the partner that you need them to be so say that you are somebody who wants a partner who is outgoing so you want a partner who likes to travel a lot so that you want a partner that has like a similar communication style to you so that you want a partner that's able to resolve conflict maybe not in your exact style of conflict resolution but somebody that can you know handle it in an appropriate and mature way and maybe you guys can come to an agreement like maybe you're somebody who's like an immediate resolver but your partner needs some space and you guys can kind of negotiate and be like okay i know that you need space Maybe if we have a fight, we take like an hour and then we can check in. Things like this are totally reasonable, but say that you are somebody who needs immediate resolution and your partner's like, I'll talk to you when I'm ready. And when they're ready is like two weeks later. That's not something you're going to fix. That's like an irreconcilable difference. Or maybe your partner just doesn't believe in conflict resolution at all. They're just kind of like, nope, I'm going to hold a grudge forever. There are certain things that you want in a partner. And it's not realistic for your partner to always rise to every single one of your expectations. You're never going to find that person that is 100% categorically the perfect match for you. Relationships are work. However, there are certain things that people cannot fix about themselves. Um, and there are certain things that are incompatible completely. One of those things, again, is going to be if you have somebody who is older and is deeply rooted in a pattern of behavior that is problematic and disruptive to your relationship. Those are relationships that you should not pursue because you're going to burn yourself out. And this person is never going to be able to meet you where you're at. And that is a big part of relationships. Your partner and you both need to be able to move around and kind of meet each other where you're at. That you have a bad day and your partner kind of needs to step up and be like, you know what, I'll, I'll kind of take care of the house tonight. Will you just rest? If you have a bad day and your partner's like, fuck you, where's my dinner? Every single time. And they have no patience for that or no understanding to that. That's kind of an incompatibility that you need to take into consideration. Um, so whenever I see somebody who is very old, and when I say very old, I'm talking like 40 plus, And they feel like they're kind of rooted in this weird kind of dynamic where it's almost like manipulative and abusive, right? You got to let that shit go, okay? You can't fix everybody and you can't force people to fit into a mold and that's never going to fucking happen, right? And I'm going to pull this up really quickly. So this is what was linked. So, so for those who don't know, Poppy had recently lost their job due to them uh, giving 
her an ultimatum. The choice was between ce between ceasing all social media activity, including the channel, and potentially losing her job. So, I mean, yeah, based on all the shit that she posts on social media, I, it is not surprising to me at all. That seems like a no shit moment, in my opinion. But, okay. So, I have three things to go over, and then we'll go over the, the leaks. So, first thing I want to go over is Luxander. Um, Luxander went ahead and kind of threw um, its hat into the ring, talking about, because apparently Poppy brought up Luxander by name, so... That's why Luxander got involved. Okay, so this is the thread. Luxander says, I believe that Sage, so Sage is now the current like third partner in Poppy Zena and Sage. So I just wanted to update. Sage may have started out as a victim, but she is now part of the abuse cycle and helps Poppy and Zena perpetuate abuse in this space, attacking detractors and feeling harassment. So this is um, in Poppy and Zena's uh, Discord server. They have a not safe for work tab in their Discord server. Um, but what ended up happening was there was risque, furry drawings that were posted in the general chat. And so in the general chat, the the images are like, there's like boobs and like furry pussy in the images. So should have been in the Not Safe for Work channel. So Poppy posted the furry, lewd, nudes, whatever. And then this person says, I'm really sorry to come off as rude, but I think this might be a bit spicy for a server with minors in it. I feel like this would be hit with the quote questionable rating on it. Not going to name the sites, but a couple of furry sites would use a rating. And I feel like, you know, again, not trying to start anything. And then a minor comes in and says, I do agree as a minor. I was kind of surprised. I would at least like a spoiler. So Poppy says, it's fine. Interject. I'm not acting as an admin or a mod right now. We're not allowed to mod our own situations. So um, the miner's like, okay. So they're talking about like random shit, okay. And then Sage, um, Polly, Poppy's partner comes in and says, I've looked at this and um, my opinion here is that, well, I think it's fine to ask someone to put a spoiler on art that's more risque in nature. We've allowed art from others promoting their work at the same level of risque in the past in the server. And I want to remain consistent in our rulings. Given this, I think it's fine to leave the post up since the majority of people have already seen it. So mind you, this is after somebody who is a minor is like, can you please put a spoiler on this? And they say, no, I'm not going to put a spoiler on this because everybody's already seen it. For the future, asking that things that are risque be spoiled is is fine, but I wouldn't count count on it as an expectation for a few reasons. The first is that Poppy is not incorrect about the level to which risque images are normalized, and blank who brought it up isn't wrong. However, the over the over sexualization is a thing. So again, I can't show the images on screen because these are not safe for work images. There is furry titties in this picture. Okay, so this is an inappropriate picture. Um, however, the issue with the concern that minors could see this is that. This isn't harmful for minors to see. It's not harmful for minors in a general chat to see furry boobs, apparently, and furry ass, apparently. Um, <laughs> however, the issue with the concern that minors could see this, it isn't harmful for minors to see, and that doesn't take into the account the degree of what's appropriate for certain minors. I think a 15 to 17 year old can generally handle this and other similar images were allowed in here. So again, a minor is like, can you spoil this? This is fucking inappropriate. You have a not safe for work channel. Why don't you just put it in there? And they're like, well, everybody's already seen it. I'm not going to put a spoiler on it because like people post other creepy shit in here all the time. And it's fine for minors to see furry titty and furry ass posted from fucking 40 year old adults. Okay. So TLDR Poppy posts ludes in the safe part of the discord and gets her girlfriend among the situation, essentially disregarding the discomfort um, from the two minors stated they were allegedly surprised with ass in the face. This is where the wholesome degeneracy gets you. So this is an example. Um, anyway, this is a pretty minor example on its own, but given that Poppy publicly flirts with 19 year olds and exposed her naked breasts to a 19 year old who did not consent in this context, it's really fucked up and Sage is absolutely part of the problem now. Good luck, darling. So got some sussy stuff right there some sussy stuff right there okay and there are two more things that are relevant to this so <clears throat> after the allegations against noe dropped that um that poppy essentially said that noe raped poppy by deception by essentially breaking up with her after they hooked up on poppy's twitter is this guardian acorn like essay essentially um defending poppy so the person who writes this is annie gallagher annie gallagher okay so this is a really long thread talking about why they defend um 
Poppy, essentially. And their example for why they're defending Poppy is because Poppy has defended them in the past. Okay? So the reason that Poppy stepped up to defend this Annie Gallagher person is because Annie Gallagher had a Discord server with miners in it and allowed maps to be in the Discord server. So this is a leak from her own Discord server. These images are very fuzzy. Essentially, her admin rolled and posted all these logs, okay? So not only did Fate CEO, this is their former mod, break revenge porn laws in several countries by leaking my Discord server, which had people's nudes on it, but he leaked it while believing that a 15-year-old girl had posted nudes in here. So this person here is saying that they're 15. Their name is Fauna. So they're saying that they're 15. They're asking how old they are. Another person in this Discord server is 14 years old. This Fauna person says, can I have my rolls back, please? I want to repost my nudes. And within this article, they were called out and they were attacked because they allowed a minor attracted person named Zeb Demon into their Discord server where minors were posting nude images of themselves. So this is the person that is defending Poppy. This person, this is what's linked on Poppy's fucking Twitter. This person is defending Poppy as someone who had 14 and 15 year olds posting nude images in their fucking Discord server while self-admitted minor attracted persons were in their Discord server. <sighs> the reason for this is because I'm willing to allow people who identify as maps in my server, provided they don't advocate for pro-contact views or act like creeps. Keep in mind the server is 18 plus, meaning there are no minors present. Yet, we have people in the server admitting they are 14 and 15 years old. So this is, this is important. This is important. This is the person that they have their article pinned on their Twitter. And this is the article. And this is, this is the background. This is the background of this person saying like, look, this is, this is why Poppy defended me in the past. And this is why I'm defending Poppy now. MAP stands for minor attracted person. That's what this stands for. So that's a yikes on bikes, guys. That is a fucking huge yikes on bikes. No? Okay, so we've got that going for us. We've got that going for us, okay? Next, we'll go over one more thing, and then we will go ahead and we will uh, go over the leaked logs that were released yesterday, okay? So this is Poppy's adult child. Okay, who is now an adult. So this is their child, uh, Poppy's child, Poppy's biological child. And this is basically a text post that is saying, you know, my mom kind of self-flagellates a lot, says like, I was really abusive. I was really horrible to you, blah, blah, blah. But she says, you know, not like not all parents are perfect and she made mistakes, but it wasn't nearly as bad as um, she said it was. However... <clears throat> she says that Xena is somebody that kind of amplified the mistreatment of them in their home. So they get a new apartment. Um, the move happened in summer of 2018. Things were still going well for the first year or two. Xena is correct when they say that they were helping with school and disability services for the first few years, not entirely. Um, I'm not entirely sure uh, when things started to go downhill. I want to say uh, 2022, I think COVID really jump-started a lot of the problems. Xena gradually became meaner and more controlling of me, despite numerous claims of them not wanting to be my parent. Um, my mom always defended me when Xena, when me and Xena had arguments. Um, but as time went on, she started siding with Xena more. I'm not exactly certain when she started her channel, but her channel intro was posted on February 3rd, 2021. My point of this post is that her fall from grace was much earlier than what people think. So somebody asked, would you be willing to speak more um, on what's being worked on being worked to illness collapsing? Like what happened with any of these times? So the child elaborates and says, so I have POTS. Heat, excessive exercise and frequent changes in body elevation, lack of food and water makes people with POTS dizzy, prone to nausea, collapsing, passing out. I thankfully have never passed out. Um, one time I collapsed was not for my parents talking about their AC and stuff. Um, this time they were talking about where they were vacuuming and cleaning the house essentially. And the AC was out and starting to hit our limit. I came to my mom at my mom's room and asked if they put in a maintenance request for the AC yet. My mom snapped at me and said, we're suffering just as much as you are, which is blatantly untrue since my disorder is directly affected by the heat and I literally collapsed the previous day. I had to lay down on the dog bed while breathing and they got mad at me for not finishing the vacuum chore despite struggling with my illness. So as we continue on down here, we have more examples of this. Um, we also have examples of them being, um, and this is if you take the child's word for it. Um, I, 
I personally, based on everything that we've read so far, would take this um, at face value for sure. Um, the child is an adult now. So the child is an adult now. Um, <clears throat> So uh, they blocked my internet on March 18th, 2023. I only got it back for job interviews. They regularly made me do chores that required internet. Um, even though they cut off internet access, the library only allows two hours of computer a day. I think I might have gotten back on the internet for a little bit, uh, but I still don't have internet when I moved out in May. For context, my birthday is in late March, so I don't think they even gave me my internet back for my birthday. Um, the POTS diagnosis, and then... Um, why did they block your internet? I didn't complete chores to their liking. And yes, I paid rent and utilities from a trust fund after a lawsuit after my bio mom's death. A trust fund my mom didn't want me to spend on rent despite her using it to pay rent. I did get punished a lot. And then so this is uh, Poppy or this is Zena's response to um, the leaks of the child posting on Tumblr, essentially. Uh, so... Finally trying again to make the house feel like ours, set it up to meet our needs, feel safe again, don't get it twisted. What Poppy's adult kid, quote, and my kid too, did to us was emotional abuse. So many of my keepsakes were broken over the years. I miss my mom ass. They weren't a weepy child. They never said shit like, shit like this in their life until the last month or two. Even then, they do miss Poppy's company and they never talked like that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Basically, uh, all the way at the end, Poppy has worked uh, from home for many years now. When I say show up, I mean go to their bedroom. Um, or the couch of the living room and that's it asking for a time that they could be verbal over text during the day that's it and they're talking about an adult the child is uh an adult so <clears throat> this is another tumblr post and this is to um you and poppy traumatized the kid especially you xena you were so cruel to a kid uh a kid to a degree that made me sick to my core and that's from the documented stuff i can't even fathom what the kids saw what they heard and how they felt to live in a house with two parents that acted like it was a burden for their kid existing they couldn't even exist in the living room or the kitchen comfortably constantly at risk of triggering your unmanaged anger over the smallest things and poppy ended it all this kid is smart as fuck and a warrior don't let pnz make you think that you're an insolent money hungry brat all that kid wanted was parents who respected them so uh they respond and say, great googly moogly, the shit that Xena said about me is absolutely fucking vile. I don't even have anything to add. Just wow. So <clears throat> this person responds and says, Xena, you try to starve a kid with pot. Shut the fuck up. And all because you couldn't handle them, have them being in the same room as you when you spent 40 hours in the kitchen. Somehow that meant they couldn't use the microwave and wasn't permitted to use the kitchen after that. Xena, you fucking melted a bag of bagels and tried to blame it on the kid. Fuck all the way off. So in here, there is, uh, where is it? It is alleged here that so they fled the house at the age of 23 and they weighed 80 pounds when they left the house because they were really strict about the times that the kid could and could not use the kitchen. So it is alleged that when they no longer lived with Zena and Poppy at 23, when they moved out, that they were 80 pounds. So the kid's Tumblr is linked here, obviously. Um, and then this is uh, Poppy's response. Fuck, I wish people would come to us when they hear some bullshit online. We have videos of this shit. Like, how hard is it to come to me in DMs and ask me questions? But no, you're going to believe things for my estranged kid who has a history of lying and abuse. Um, so somebody asked, they say, what was claimed about you abusing the child seems quite credible. And it always has been the best to give a victim an ear. Uh, you had a pretty high hill to climb to disprove this. And Poppy says, sure, I have documentation, including the housing agreements, checking account data, and the fact that the internet being taken away didn't didn't take away their hotspot or their ability to message on Discord. As giving a victim an ear, why didn't you people do the same for me when I was raped? So this is the child, the child allegations. This is, um, this is the child allegations. Um, and again, you can take it for what it's worth, obviously. Um, Kid could be lying, sure, I guess, but based on everything that we've seen, it seems uh, it seems probably probably pretty credible, in my opinion, uh, at least at least from my perspective. So, um, kids don't cut off, cut you off for no reason. Usually, kids cut their parents off for very good reasons. This is true. If you have adult children and they don't want anything to do with you, that's usually a you thing. Like nine times out of ten, I would say that's a you thing. Yeah, doing online call out posts with your kid is actually fucking unhinged. <laughs> true. So this is from March 13th. So yesteryay, yesteryay. Okay, this is a big ass fucking Google Doc. Okay, so this was this was dumped yesterday. So here we have wah, 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 the wild Google document. Okay. So <clears throat> proof of Zena and Poppy's emotional abuse of Noe Flake leading up to the trip, how they coerced and abused her into going on the trip after she expressed not being interested in continuing the relationship. The now hidden clip on their stream in October 
talks about how polyamory works. It's a half an hour, but if you want to see what they have to say on public, it's pretty revealing. So we'll start with this, okay? The last several weeks have been awful. I'm going to explain why. And ZZ can fill them in to a point, because I know there's like one particular piece of information we have some contention over. <laughs> Wait, are we saying this on stream? I'm not saying it all. I'm just giving a light overview because I need to, I need to vent. Um, and then we're going to get to Beyonce Forwards and Foreign Man and Foreign Land. Is this some people off? No. Are you sure? No, we're not pissing anyone off. Uh, um, so because there's this, there's this thing that happens sometimes when we are dealing with a lot of stress and a lot of stuff, and it creates a positive feedback loop, and I don't mean positive good. And that, that feedback loop is something to the effect of Poppy gets stressed and has a migraine probably every three days. ZZ gets stressed, starts having a migraine daily. Environmental factors fuck us because Michigan's weather has been god awful. And then on top of that, we've had personal life issues going on. It does kill me. From but multiple directions. One of those we're going to be talking about on stream tonight. Another one will probably be a future segment on polyamory because I got some fucking thoughts. But I'm going to leave that be for now. So the health issues have been, ZZ has basically had a migraine ongoing for about two to three weeks now. And it's been, yeah. it's been awful. And the problem is, is that ZZ is kind of the linchpin in the house because I'm usually working. And so, like, I'll get things done around here, but, like, there has to be, like, a changeover and some discussions because, A, I have ADHD and don't remember all the stuff that we need to do. But also, like, ZZ's usually the one that handles, like, the grocery orders or handles that kind of stuff. And then if, if, she, if they're down and completely fucked, we brought out food in the house, which then prevents, which then means that we have to then push because then ZZ ends up not getting enough food and then has blood sugar drops, which then cause further migraines. Then, to deal with the stress of dealing with the migraines and not getting a chance to see our friends, we end up staying up too fucking late and end up being on VC until 4 a.m. when I have to get up at fucking 9.30. And then I have to push Poppy through the ADHD to do the grocery shopping. Or the laundry or things like that, which I don't mind doing. It's just sometimes hard for me to get motivated to do a thing sometimes. Sometimes I, I, I like there's a, there's a, there's an ongoing really sad phenomenon where sometimes ZZ will have to get upset enough to like cry to get me to no, notice a fucking problem because my ADHD will tune that shit out like no other. Especially when I'm stressed with work or stressed with relationship shit or other things. Now, add in the fact that this year has been hell. Between one psychotic ex who's decided to have a, a, a fucking crusade against me online, a group of people nearly killing my girlfriend, uh, a current situation with a partner where I basically had to declare war on Metamors. I'll get to it. And on top oh, of... Metamors all... again. Metamors is like the partner of your partner. So, like, you're dating somebody and they're also dating somebody. That other person they're dating is a Metamor. That's what that All means. of this other shit. Then I had to become estranged from my own kid because my kid was acting abusive towards my partner. That has been our and year. Oh, and the people in question, by the way, that nearly killed my girlfriend, the way they did this was not intentional. The way they did this was they took a person with borderline and then tried to isolate them away from their favorite person, which caused dissociation and psychosis. Just saying. In the span of like a couple months, we lost. So they're talking about Noe's partner. Um, fuck, I don't remember their name, but it's in the screenshots. Like the first screenshot has their partner's name in it. So they're talking about Noe's partner and how Noe's partner was like causing all this fucking distress and shit. That's what they're talking about. Two mods and a friend of ours, a former girlfriend, in fact. We lost uh, a girlfriend of mine who was actively doing manipulation and sabotage in the background. We lost yeah. my kid. Yeah. Because my kid decided to just bounce. Yeah, I have a 23-year-old, guys. I got married when I was 19. My wife was three months pregnant when I met her. I decided to sign the form. And then I raised this kid the entire time, even after their mom died in 2004 <laughs> from a horse riding accident. Now, the joke is, is that this kid has basically been there with me through all of my life, all of my chance changes. I have been an awful parent at times. I've been a great parent at times. It just depends. But this year, they decided to just give, like in the last year, give the fuck up. They didn't want to deal with anything, despite the fact that Xena had got them to go to school, had helped them get more responsible, had helped them get jobs, had done it. Like, ZZ was basically acting as a fucking unpaid case manager. Because I don't fucking have the time. They were acting like an unpaid case manager. You mean like being a parent to the kid? Crazy. Also, like, just our skill sets lend, them, lend themselves to different things. And yeah, with that one working and me, Bobby working and me, like, here, like, no, like, I, I did a lot of the help raising them and educating them, you know, for particularly the adulthood portion of their life, which they really didn't want to do. Well, so we ended up getting some psych testing back on them and found out that not only do they have basically borderline, like, it just was clear they have borderline. I was like, okay, well, good, that runs in the family. So I'm pretty sure my mom did. Um, I must have given it to them through osmosis. Um, but the joke is, is that holy fuck, like, the testing was so sophisticated that it actually pointed out that they were doing this thing where they would pretend to be incompetent in order to get people to give them negative attention, which explained why Adrian would know how to do a task and then suddenly, like, ero like er erodingly forget how it worked. Yeah, yeah, they would do it perfectly for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden just... This is Xena and Poppy. Um, I will briefly pause here to say that this is, like, actually cuckoo bananas, in my opinion. Um... You took your kid to get psychologically tested, and when they got psychologically tested, they were like, uh, yeah, your kid's just like a huge piece of shit. That was the test, apparently. Like, this is this is interesting. This is interesting. Gone, and they'd be complaining that like they couldn't do it, they didn't know how. 
they needed all this help. So my thing is that my kid ended up leaving uh, surreptitiously, just left. They said they were going to be going to the store. They ended up tossing a bunch of stuff out their window and bouncing the fuck out of here and I guess lying to the person they were going to be doing room share with. Yep. Let me be clear. This year has been fucking hell for me and for my partner. It's been hard. I don't need to remind people. And this is not going out to any future partners. Just as a FYI. I have borderline personality disorder. When I make a boundary based on my mental health, I request that you actually listen to that and do that thing. Or, or just say no at the get-go and just make the decision. There we are. So at least now we all know we don't have to get any further into it. Now, if you've been following my Twitter, the short version of this is very simple. And I'm not going to throw my partner under the bus because I do love her dearly and I don't. And then she is an FP, so I'm not super comfortable doing so anyway. But the long story short is one of my triggers is that I don't ever want to hear about my partners being intimate with their partners. If I hear about sexual content from my other, from my partners about their other partners, I will start getting intrusive. So the other thing too, to be mindful of, this is important. So remember that like it is triggering for her to hear or see about her partners being intimate with their other partners. Okay. So one probably shouldn't be in polyamorous relationships then. Number one, number two, uh, all the screenshots that we're going to look at, they don't, they don't even like talk about like being intimate. Like, it's literally just, like, hanging out with, like, my girlfriend or whatever the fuck. It's not, like, just fucking raw-dogged my girlfriend so fucking hard, like, back shots all fucking day. Like, oh, fuck. Oh, we fucked for hours. It's not It's not like that at all. It's literally just, like, thinking about, you know, hanging out with my friend. Like, that. that's literally it. So just be mindful that, like, this is... Um, cement that in your mind that what is bothersome is hearing about or seeing your partner engaged in like sexual acts with their other partner is what it is okay so keep that in mind intrusive thoughts of this act between my partner and sort of a faceless amalgamation of people and this is harmful to me it causes anxiety it causes desires to want to get away it causes a whole bunch of really uncomfortable stuff coming up that i will not share on stream well when this stuff happens and gets shared the issue is is that if it's also in concert with stuff that brings up safety concerns you get to do a problem because all of a sudden, I don't play nice with other metamors. Now, for those who don't know, metamors are a term in the poly community referring to your partner's partners. So instead of a paramour, metamor. Got it? Meta. Oh my god, I love paramour's music. I love her. I know that one. So, the thing that I want kind of to make people aware of is that, like, I generally don't have a problem with metamors. Like, a number of my partners have partners, and that's fine. That, that's good. Um, hell, a girl I'm thinking about dating has, like, two other partners. The thing is, is that I don't have a problem with that. I might need time to, like, work towards connecting to those people because... My brain, because of borderline, immediately sort of puts them in the enemy slot because they are a threat to my well-being and needs. Now, are they really? Probably not. But that is the way my brain interprets them. So I make it very clear to my partners that if you're going, if you want like this sort of like metamorph paradise where everybody gets along, that's fine. Your bitch ass better work towards it. Well, and if you have people who are, this gets infinitely more complicated, but there are people in a situation who are either bad actors or unskilled and don't really know what they're doing. So, yeah, exactly. So basically, long story short is, is that there was an accident, some stuff got said, there was some stuff about it that was weird, and I'm not going to go into specifics, I'm not going to give up any people, despite the fact that I have an issue with some of the people that are involved, I'm not going to throw them under the bus, because we're on stream, and people do weird shit when you say things on stream. So what I'll simply do is say that this brought up safety concerns for myself and for my partners, I brought those concerns up, those were heard, but not fully understood or grokked, and it basically- So this is alluding to the, like, your, your other partner is making me want to hurt myself. That's what this is. Basically created a point where now there's just a stalemate because now my anxiety is so bad that if I even see these people online, it causes a panic attack. Um, what I would say more is that dealing with borderline and being poly means that I have to have special relationship accommodations. For example, one of my partners is going to be going out of town soon for a week to go visit one of their partners. I am going to have the option during emergencies to call if I need to or have regular calls and texts because I need to have that connection or I will start having problems. Like... All this sounds like to me is a laundry list of reasons why polyamory probably isn't for you. So I'm not polyamorous by any stretch of the imagination. Um, however, if I can imagine myself in this kind of role, um, if I'm going to do something with one of my partners and the other partner is like, I'm mentally ill, I have to be called, I have to be able to call you like at any fucking second of any fucking time of any fucking day. And if you don't answer, I'm going to freak the fuck out and I might hurt myself. That would be a pretty big red flag to me. That would be like, okay, the whole point of this is that we're we're kind of doing our own thing, you know? Like I'm going on a date or I'm going like out of town with my other person, you know? Um, I would like to be able to have that intimate time with them. Uh, I don't think that that's a big ask.
in like a polyamorous relationship. And again, I'm not polyamorous. I could be totally fucking wrong. But from my perspective, this would be something where I'd be like, go fuck yourself. Um, I am going to have the time that I promised my other partner with my other partner. Um, if your special accommodation is you get to talk to them whenever the fuck you want, uh, that's not going to work because I was hoping to have time, you know, with my partner. Uh, this weekend or whatever but like this would be like all i'm all i'm really feeling right now is like it sounds like polyamory just isn't for you like that's that's kind of what i'm getting out of this uh just listening briefly here oh anarchy in your own nebulous definition okay got it relationship anarchy neon rush refers to a type of polyamory where there is no such thing as actual rules or agreements. So most of the time I tend to go with the Frank Vo school of like more than two, which is that you don't use rules, you use agreements. Agreements are things that everybody has to follow, such as you get regular STI testing, things like that. The problem is, is that um, relationship anarchy as a thing seems to have this notion where you don't really have to tell your partners about your other partners. You kind of keep everybody in the dark if you so desire. And you have this tendency to not feel like you really owe anyone anything. The problem with that is, is that people have things like jealousy come up. They also have things like possessiveness come up. And these are natural human things. I am possessive. Exceedingly so. <laughs> there are partners, not all of them. This just sounds to me like an argument against polyamory. It's like, I, I get really fucking jealous and I'm very possessive. It's like, okay, then maybe you shouldn't be in a polyamorous relationship, bro. But there are partners I use the term mine with. Good example is Xena. Xena is mine. Now, does that mean Xena can't can have other partners? Sure, there's a person we're both looking at wanting to date. But guess what? There's still a way in my brain that Xena and actually one of my other partners is coded as mine. Yeah, does that play well night away with poly? No. Do I care? No. I don't give a fuck. Okay, so we got it. It's incompatible with like polyamory. Like I am in my whole worldview is incompatible with polyamory, but I don't care. I still want to do it. I still want to fucking ruin other people's lives because, you know, I want to drag other people into my chaos and my madness just because. Oh, okay. It's what my brain needs to feel good. Um, and so this poly situation wouldn't be that deep, except it was something that kept eating away at me because there's the clinician side of my brain that sensed that there was an issue with the situation. And what this story involved. And then there's another part of my brain that was like BPD, freaking the fuck out. And the problem is these two parts work together really well. And so what ended up happening is, is me having a ton of anxiety coming up, having to deal with a bunch of blowout issues. This cut time away from me hanging out, you know, spending time with Xena, spending time with friends. Um, it basically caused a lot of stuff. And here's the problem. You could say, well, Poppy, why didn't you just make sure to spend time with people and like, you know, just step away from the stuff? That's a good question. <laughs> you can't. You have borderline. In this hypothetical scenario, you have borderline. And this person who you just started dating is your fucking FP. They are the person that in your... That is, like, you need to work on yourself then. Like, people aren't obligated to be, like, your fucking therapist, right? Like, even if you are borderline, like, it's not appropriate for you to drag somebody else into that chaos just because, like, and especially if you're aware of it, like, there's there's no reason for this. For some reason, coach, just right to be incredibly important in your hierarchy of needs because there's some way in which they interact with your psychology, combination of also the emotional intent, intensity, etc. Normally, most BPD people have one. I have two. That creates some problems because if there's contention, say this one's upset about losing time with me because of another partner, I go into a panic attack. And I need this one's help to, you know, have pants because I'm migraine for several days. But can't always communicate. So, or this one doesn't realize that I said, hey, I need pants or hey, I need you to do the laundry two days ago. And then, you know, two days yeah. later, here we go, there's some stress. And oh, yeah, Zena doesn't have pants and it's uh, yeah, very it, dysphoric now. Not to be fair. Skirts. All right. So, this is pretty much, this is just the gist of what we're looking at here. So, this is, um, this is just like a little stream where they kind of give like their weird fucking takes on polyamory, okay? So basically the takeaways from here are that like polyamory probably is not like a healthy option for this person. Um, the other thing that is important to know as well, like I said, is the thing that we mentioned as being like triggering is that uh, if our partner is with their other partner and then we find out that they like fucked or something, that that's what's distressing. Um, so those are the two big takeaways from this is just kind of like the weird kind of understanding, I guess, of uh, polyamory, uh, so to speak. Yeah, the other thing too that was weird as well as they were like, um, Xena did so much for the kid. Like, they were basically a social worker. You mean like a parent? Oh, okay. That's interesting. Uh, like, that is kind of, that's like a Jonah Hill boundary to me. Like, my boundary is that I need to be able to contact you 24-7. Otherwise, I'm going to kill myself in a video game. No, I think that um, Poppy just likes the idea of being able to have, like, a bunch of different fucking partners and then <clears throat> be, like, in control of that person. I think that's what she likes. It's interesting because she's acutely aware that she has all these issues, but she's like, I don't fucking care. I'm still going to drag people down with me. That's the interesting part of all of it. Okay, so this is this is the prerequisite to all of this. This is their their weird kind of uh, perspective and or takes on polyamory. So everybody buckle up. This is a long ass fucking Google document. We're going to go over a lot of screenshots. So everybody grab your oh shit handle. There we go. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we just watched this clip. 
This was in October. So in October, Amy is Noe's like primary partner or whatever the fuck the word is that they use, Marimore, Mar whatever the fuck that word is. So Noe's other partner is Amy. So Amy posts on Twitter and says, you know, philosophically, I love spiders. They're wonderful, not always dangerous to humans. However, there's a deep fear rooted in the marrow of my bones that wants to flee when I see a big one in person. Noe responds and says, I will hold them and carry them away from you. Amy says, he he, oddly, the only time when I'm with them is when someone else is terrified of them because one of us has to be used to it. Useful. Good to know. I won't have to be. And he says, I love spiders. Amy says, oh, I know. You were the reason for this post. You did come to mind. And now he says, I always come to mind, but good to know. Amy says, you do come, come to mind quite a lot. And then Poppy says, huh? Amy says, oh, I think of her like a lot. And then Poppy responds and says, no, I shouldn't interact with you. So again, remember in the video, the clip that we watched where she was like, what really bothers me is when um, the metamores are like, there's like sexual tension or they're talking about sexual shit or they're talking about fucking that's what's triggering to me okay remember that's what she said so poppy then quote tweets this and says love getting a panic attack by running into a metamor and then in response to this i have very real trauma around interactions with metamors today i did not make that better i worked my ass off to fix this situation and the other partner acts like a child bridge burned so this is from this thread about posting about spiders. And it's like, I was thinking about you when I made this post about spiders. This is what we're flipping our shit about. This is what we're having a panic attack about, okay? Poppy says, so this is the, I have the real trauma, bridge burn. Then she responds and says, going forward due to said trauma, I think I'm going to be very hesitant to interact with or know very much about any of my partner's partners. I also do not want to hear about the past sexual situations beyond safety behavior. These are boundaries. Additional screenshot. Um, this is Poppy's odd treatment of Sage's suicidal depressive episodes, May is in reference to Sage's suicide attempt. So Sage says, I think I was right in May. Poppy says, love, please stop. This shit isn't cool. And then Sage says, sorry for the inconvenience. So very interesting interactions on Twitter. And again, very interesting to me that all of this is litigated on Twitter. Mind you, this is also weird, we should say. So November, um, for... Preference, you can't, or uh, preface, you can't really see it because my fucking chat is in the way. So we're going through these screenshots right now. Um, we're going October, November, December. December is the stream of the clip that we watched. Uh, 1220, so December 20th, is DMs. Uh, they meet on the 25th, and the, or... So they're, they're meeting in December, basically. We'll get better timestamps when we get down to these screenshots. But so Poppy and... Noe meet in late December, and that's when they end up with the accused rape or whatever the fuck. So this is just prefacing this in like her weird interactions building up to them meeting and then after, okay? So this was all in October. This is in November. So Penny says, watching my headmate try to sabotage her relationship is fucking painful. She knows better. I know she knows better, but she knows better. But, in com but it is a compulsion. She's trying to prove her partner doesn't love her. Please don't fall for it, little moth. Noe says, I would never fall for it. No worries, pretty shark. Poppy says, good moth, I miss you. Please reach out if you need help. Poppy, we need help with Poppy. We all love you. So, and then this is a screenshot of Poppy's uh, Discord, and it says, stupid brain, stop pushing people you love away. Picking fights isn't going to fix anything. So this is a tweet that says, well, it was too good to last. My nice, calm, relaxed uh, relaxation for my edible, plus talking to my partner who is away, has faded. Now there's just ba the background hum of anxiety, intrusive thoughts about people I love in other people's beds isn't fun, but I am getting through this. Poppy then says, uh, when I talk about intrusive thoughts, it feels like people wonder what is so bad about seeing two people fucking. Imagine a closed eye mini fever dream with a person you love banging someone who you do not recognize but are primarily scared of. So again, we're getting we're getting like point after point after point after point as to why this person should not be engaged in polyamorous relationships, period. Um, so Sage is now um, in like the polycule with uh, Poppy and Xena. So Sage says, I hate having to mute people I care about because their posts trigger every insecurity and fear I have. It makes coming on here so much less enjoyable and I feel like an asshole for not being able to just be happy for them and feeling resentment instead. Maybe I'm just bad at this. Maybe the end result is I'm going to have to just set a hard boundary on certain interactions from here on out because living like this is super tiring. Poppy says, no, you have BPD. I have a partner muted right now, so I can't see fucking vacation pics. I get it. Sage says, doesn't make me feel like less of an asshole. She says, same. I literally am beating myself up because I can't look at at Noe Flake's timeline without being without it being digital self-harm. Do what you need to do. You are not an asshole or weak. You are a person with BP fucking D that I want to goddamn survive it. 
this does read like Twilight. Very true. So we have this person being like, maybe polyamory isn't for me because I can't handle my partner being with other people. And then Poppy's like, no, queen. Uh, I also like digitally self-harm by looking at, at my partner's timeline while she's on vacation. Okay. <clears throat> Poppy says, I had to be my partner in DMs for an hour. I'm not in a great headspace. I just found out that a friend fucking betrayed me and every message keeps bringing up intrusive thoughts of either what she's doing more of her other partner sitting over and over her shoulder. Fuck. And then this is the, the intrusive thoughts quote retreat. Then she says, uh, fucking ideations now. Love that for me. The desire to disappear because I had to make a boundary temporarily and silently because voicing it out loud would have been too painful. I rarely get to be the fun partner. I'm too serious, passionate, and sensitive. It sucks because many of my combos turn into serious, turn serious because BPD gets triggered. Back at it again. Remember, one, try not to be clingy. Two, remember that she's coming back and is in love with you. Three, trust her. Four, she is willing to work with you and she supports you. Five, speak up about needs. Do not obfuscate. You guys, if you have to do this, why are you in a fucking polyamorous relationship? Why are you doing this to yourself? One of the things that makes BBD so hard is the self-loathing. I hate feeling this way. I hate that I question my partner's motives, nitpick every fucking thing, and that I can feel rejection at the drop of a hat. All I can hope is that my partners love me and don't hate me. Okay, so then we have more, more of, more of this. Up. Poppy says, I am thankful for my pretty little moth at Noe Flake. I don't know where to begin. I love you so much. This has been the definition of a whirlwind romance. Despite my mental illness, you have hung in there and supported me in every possible way. God, you mean the world to me. I am deeply thankful for Xena. I am thankful for Noe Flake. I am thankful for Fake Ass Autumn. I am thankful for Sage, blah, blah, blah. So then we move to December. So, so far we just have like stuff that shouldn't be posted on Twitter, mostly. Um, secondly, uh, a lot of evidence as to why this person shouldn't be in a polyamorous relationship. And thirdly, we see kind of the weaponization of um, like suicide baiting essentially. And I, the thing that I thought was particularly weird about these interactions is that when she's talking about like splitting and like freaking out and having ideations and stuff, and like I have to, I have to like mute my partner's partner because it bothers me, or I have to mute my partner because I can't see all these posts or whatever. She tags the fucking partner, so the partner has to sit there and read this long thread about her being on vacation with her other partner is like the worst fucking thing. It's like killing. It's like killing Poppy. Um, very weird. Very weird. So we jump to December. Okay. So, excuse me, we are in December. Towards the end of December is when they meet up, okay? So, <clears throat> and then when we see these tweets, these little emojis symbolize like a different altar talking. Again, I don't know um, all the altars. I just, I just don't, so. Alter says, if you love someone, but then you try to protect the person who abused them, regardless of who they are, your love is conditional. Sometimes you have to draw lines in the sand. And then Penny is another one of uh, Poppy's altar says, I've never been so angry. The data doesn't line up. If someone wanted to get a hold of Poppy, they have thousands of ways. This suggests they didn't try. If the timeline doesn't match up, they are either wrong or lying. What does everyone get the benefit of the doubt but us? And then Poppy retweets her own altar's tweet and says, calm down, Trucko. And then responds and says, like, we are all mad, but it will be okay. I have faith in at Noe will hear us. Just take time and stop posting shit on Twitter. So again, like tagging this person in this and making this person read like your fucking meltdowns, I would consider this to be highly manipulative, right? So if I am, if there's something that bothers me that my wife does and I'm venting about it and I'm like, every time that my wife goes to get drinks with the girls, I literally have to try not to hang myself in the backyard in a video game. And it's so distressing and so upsetting to me that she's having so much fun and laughing along with the girlies, but I'm not there to laugh along with her. Her laughs only matter when they're with me. And then I tag her in that and she has to like emotionally process my uncomfortable feelings like as a bystander and then feel responsible for my reactions, my overreaction to her going and getting drinks with the girlies, that is manipulative in my opinion. Because you're essentially forcing that person to be exposed to your internal monologue and your own like self-flagellation, self-degradation. And you're kind of weaponizing like you being happy and doing something without me is making me want to hurt myself. Very manipulative, very controlling and very inappropriate. Again, I wish people would just like get a fucking diary. Like, why are we posting this shit on Twitter? It's very upsetting to me. <sighs> okay, <clears throat> moving on. Penny says, I fucked that up. And then Poppy, Penny is the altar. Penny the altar says, I fucked that up. And then Poppy re re retweets it and says, you don't say. Um, so Poppy posts this and says, I have a video date tonight with a lady who is very special to me. And she might be wearing this dress that I bought her. And hopefully on the weekend of the 22nd to the 25th, I can take her out of it. And then Penny is the one apparently that sabotaged the relationship. Apparently, I don't know. Uh, so Poppy says, last night during my date, one of my headmates decided to use this as an opportunity to go off. 
go off instead of visiting our partner, which completely completely tired out everyone and fucked the mood. I am so fucking angry. Mm -hmm. um, I am, in general, very skeptical of the DID shit in general. Um, I am extremely skeptical of the DID shit in extremely manipulative and controlling people because it's usually what it's used for uh, with very manipulative and very uh, controlling um, and abusive people. They'll be like, it wasn't me, it was my dragon paw altar or whatever the fuck. So just my two cents in right there. Um, okay, <clears throat> so we're still complaining about this. Okay. Four days, one hour, 36 minutes until Friday when I leave with ZZ to go see Noe Flake for Christmas. Me looking at her. Abby says, hey, Noe Flake, three days, 11 hours, 38 minutes till I leave to come and see you. Hey, Noe Flake, two days, five hours, 11 minutes until I leave to come and see you. I love you at Noe Flake. Etsy was having a sale on Black Friday and I didn't know why, but I bought this piece of sterling silver Luna Moth called out to me. No idea why I liked it so much. I bought two, but the other one is going to someone special who should be arriving any day now. Okay, so this is before the trip. So this is a stream. We're not going to watch this one. The video is on her YouTube, but I'm not going to watch this right now. Maybe we can watch that in a little bit. But so there's this stream, and then these are the DMs immediately after the stream. Poppy says, that's fucking lame. Apparently, when we were on stream, and I was vaguely thinking about how happy I was with my new relationship, as well as the mental illness I have been dealing with. Apparently, Sage saw this and got super triggered and started having ideation, so we had to check and see if she was safe. And she is, but apparently my ex, Melina... Melina, a friend of ours, and told them before anyone else knew that Sage was safe. We have no idea how she got that information for any of us. No, he says, weird. Poppy says, yeah, it irritates me. But things vague on stream. But Melina is harping saying that I am ignoring Sage for you and I caused this, which I did not. No, he says, I have no idea, love. Uh, Poppy says, no worries. It just more, it's just more nonsense. I'm focusing on, focusing on the positive, getting to snuggle you soon. And then we have the cringe snuggles you closely in italics. And then, so she sent this at 12.44 a.m. And then she sends it 1.10 a.m. Sorry if you're busy, busy, darling. I love you. And then Noe says, I love you too, back. Um, Poppy says, talk in the morning. Noe says, I do have plans in the morning, but I don't think it will last all morning. I should be able to talk after 12. I will let you know if that changes. Poppy says, sounds good. Then I will just send good morning and random stuff. Respond if you're able to. Talking at noon sounds nice. She says, okay, love. Uh, Poppy says, thank you for being clear with me. That means a lot. And then she sends back a little heart snug emoji. Um, Poppy says, I appreciate appreciate you and the time that I've been, I, you've given me love. I hope your plans are fun and I will send hugs and memes. Hugs, good night. Gosh, you are so good. I love you so much. And then she says, I love you too. Um, okay. Moving on. Uh, Poppy says, hi, mom. Can't sleep. I love you. And then this is 20, about a half an hour after the last one. No, he says, love you too, kiddo. I'm having a... <laughs> it's just so uncomfortable. Um, hugs you. I know you were busy and I had, I had thoughts come up and I got scared. Hugs you tightly. Buries face and neck. Rubs your back. I'm here, love. I got scared because I thought about the trip going bad and you not wanting to be with us. I know we can't talk about this stuff, but it just feels like I'm going to mess up and ruin things. You'll be perfectly fine. I'm excited to see you all. I know, but so much is riding on these trips. What if you hate us? What if the body sucks at adult stuff? And what if Penny says something dumb? I don't hate you. You know that. If Penny says something dumb, I'll boop her nose. God, I fucking hate this. <laughs> and the body stuff isn't a big deal to me. I just want to snuggle. Anyone can snuggle. I bet you're great snugglers. I am a good snuggler. See? Perfect. Poppy. I just don't want to mess things up because if I do, then Penny and Poppy will be mad. You won't. Love. Poppy. And people can be bad at things. What if Poppy is bad at adult stuff? Like really bad? Or what if Penny says something really dumb? What if Peppermint freaks you out? Or what if ZZ gets all P PMDD-E? I just want, I just don't want to ruin this because then you're never going to want us. And he says, I can handle all that. Uh, Poppy says, I want my, I want my mom and I want you in my life. I don't like you so far away. I don't know what to do. And he says, I have Max. So th mind you, this is at like four o'clock in the morning. I'm imagining this is like drunk text. <laughs> like this is, oh my God. Like I feel like my skin is, I like want to like turn my skin inside out and like wear it like is like a meat suit. Like, that's what it feels like. If my skin was inside out and I was touching things, this is how this emotionally feels for me to read. Just so you guys know. I'm so happy that you're here to, like, fucking struggle bus with me. But, like, yes. Yeah, so they said goodnight, like, five times, but this is their alters talking now. These are the alters that are talking. So, 
The self-deprecating -depre shit is always a red flag. So for you guys that are not in relationships that maybe want to be in relationships, maybe you're in a relationship and you're questioning. When people do like this fishing for fucking compliments and reassurance all the time, this is so cr not only cringe, it's also a big red flag that this person is insecure and needs like your validation to be able to like exist. This is really weird. Like, oh my God, what if we don't do this? What if we don't do that? What if we're really bad at this? And then the fact that she brings up the adult stuff like 10 times, it reads like she's trying to get her to like sext which is also like you guys it's 2024 stop sexting please oh it's so cringe it's so cringe the like try to have pre-nut clarity not post-nut clarity pre-nut clarity have the gift of foresight sexting is cringe don't do it it's cringe do not send sexy texts you guys don't do it it's weird nobody it's so uncomfortable to read okay I, oh, i'm struggling really hard to read through this okay i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm trying really hard and remember, this person has plans in the morning or whatever, and then they were like, we can talk at noon. And it's like four in the fucking morning. We're at 3.42 a.m. and they're still talking. So this bitch is going to get like two hours of sleep and then do her plans and then talk, apparently. So time frames just to be just to be mindful, okay? So Poppy sends like this little teddy bear emoji. No, he sends hearts. Uh, Poppy says, can you just make sure that when we're making decisions that you're judging us on a curve because uh, you don't know you don't know what's as long as you know the other people? And I'm afraid that this kind of hurts our chances of getting to be with you. And I don't like that. So I want to make sure that we're grading it on a curve, just like in college. And then she sends a voice message. So please don't hold me 100% accountable. Only hold me like 80% accountable on a bell curve because I'm severely mentally ill. Hopefully that doesn't ruin the chances of our relationship. Based. Now he says, okay, I am love. I am. And then Poppy says, okay, I just wanted to be fair because we have a lot more moving parts and stuff. Because uh, like we have ZZ and we have a system that you have that you like very like real relationships with every member except for peppermint because you just met peppermint and yeah i'm just afraid that we're not going to be enough or too complicated but i should let you get back to work i love you and i'm sorry to bother you i just know who else to talk to you uh i was talking to zz but hearing from me makes me feel a lot better so again like the constant begging for reassurance the constant like all of this needy shit big red flag anytime that you're looking for somebody in a relationship also um this person is like 40 years old. I have to keep reminding myself of that because this reads like this reads like a young adult novel that was written by Stephanie Meyer if she got like shot in the head and then they had to replace her brain. You know, it's pretty rough. Okay. <clears throat> da, da, da. No, he says complicated is my typical life. No worries. I love you. Um, Poppy says, I know we're really complicated and I want, never mind. Could I ask you to say something if it's true and if it feels okay? And she says, hmm. And she says, could you tell me that I'm, that you like the idea of being with us, that the idea actually interests you? I'm not saying you have to make any decisions or anything like that, but I want to know that you actually like the idea of being in a family with us because it's hard to tell. She says, I do like the idea and it does interest me. Yes. She says, oh, okay, that means a lot because we love you a lot and I don't, I don't need a decision. I just wanted to know that there's more, uh, there's more to you to consider. There's more to you considering us than just fairness so like we're literally we're literally like begging for like could you please tell me that you like like me because she's not giving the answers that she wants she's not like yeah i love you yeah i like you yeah i can't wait to be with you yeah i'm gonna fucking kill myself if i can't be in your presence right now so it, it's literally just like blankly can you say that you fucking love me can you say it cringe um sometimes certain words are okay i'm not reading that okay so Poppy says, okay, that makes sense. All I wanted to know is that you actually like us and blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're here with that. And then Noe says, go to bed. And then go to bed, kiddo. I love you so much. And then Poppy says, good night, mom. I love you. You're a really good mom. Um, <laughs> night, night. And then so at nine o'clock, good morning. So we went to bed at four o'clock in the morning and then we're up at 9.30. <laughs> so part of the problem is that we're 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 sleep deprived as fuck okay good morning I, my love i love you good morning darling i love you too 9 30. how was your morning good so far what are you up to um plan should be starting soon though can i know what said plan is it's a date it's a date morning with sora Abby he says oh no he says was that bad should have i asked for a green light Abby says was that bad no should you have asked for a green light probably because i just woke up should i probably just go away yes pro tip Pro tip, normally you'll say what the plan is unless you're with a partner in case you will just say plans. If one of your partners is involved, it becomes vague. So we're pissed that we're doing something with the other partner this morning. Sorry, I didn't want to upset you with the partner stuff. I mean, I am upset now, but that's beside the point. My only request is at the weekend that you'll be more mindful. Yeah, of course. And then we get another wall of text. Poppy says, I really didn't like when we were on the date and you were super distracted. But yeah, next time just ask for the green light and tell me about it ahead of time instead of just dropping a bomb three minutes before it happens. I don't mind hearing that you're going out with Sora, but finding out when I just woke up is not my favorite, especially when this is a person who is like the main rival for what I want. So if your plans aren't starting yet, my guess is that you probably won't be available at noon, question mark. So 
<laughs> so I guess just let me know if you have any time before you go to bed. I haven't really got to talk to you much, uh, much saying for yesterday. That was just play. No, he says, okay, I'll let you know. Poppy says, okay, so you won't be available at noon. Is that correct? No, he says, I don't know yet. Okay, then don't tell me noon next time. And he says, wow. So again, remember like probably, probably around noon is what she said earlier. Like probably around noon. That's not a set time. Okay. This, this is like an anime, bro. This is fucking crazy. So, um, <laughs> so she said like around noon and then she's like, what are your plans? And she's hanging out with my partner. And she's like, oh, and then we send this big fucking wall of text about like how this is the worst fucking news that she's ever gotten in the entire world. And the rival part is really fucking weird, especially when this this person who is a main rival for what I want. So on the surface level, we're kind of teeheeing because this does read like an anime supervillain monologue or whatever the fuck. And th this is just like cringe as all fucking get out. But it's important to remember, one, that we have already heard Poppy say like polyamory probably isn't for fucking me, but I don't care. I'm just going to continue to like drag people into my madness. And then secondly, like these all read at least to me. And I would hope anybody that has like the emotional maturity of like an elephant calf or higher that this is emotionally manipulative. What are you doing? I'm doing this. Oh, I'm just going to go then. Like it's fucked up that you just sprang this on me. So we're not hanging out at noon then, I guess. Why did you tell me noon? Like this is very manipulative. This is very controlling. This is very weird. Um, and especially if you're in a polyamorous relationship and your partner is hanging out with their other partner and you flip your shit when they're like hanging out with their other partner. That's like kind of necessitated in polyamory. Like that's kind of one of like the key components of polyamory is the multiple partners. No? So interesting. Okay. So the whole point, Poppy says, the whole point is to have a concrete time, not just some random time thrown out. And remember, we have the logs. She said, probably sometime around noon. Oh, I really appreciate you trying to do the thing last night. But if you don't understand why it's a uh, concrete time matters, then it makes things difficult. And then, um, so this is at 946, 947. We say, uh, what? You told me noon, which I, which I took as a concrete time. I barely got to talk to you this week because you've been so busy. And I won't be able to talk much tonight because I'm going because I'm going to be packing. I feel a little bit frustrated. And again, there was no, no ask for a green light. So I just got kind of dumped on. This just got kind of dumped on me right before popping in the shower. But I don't want you to like be distracted during your date because I don't like it. I don't like it when you did that to me, so I'm going to go. Can you please just give me a concrete time when you'll be done, or is that not possible? And then Noe says, it's not possible. I said noon, but there's a possibility it might be longer. So, like, again, we're, we're doing, like, this kind of, like, manipulate. This is, like, ah, oh, this is just so manipulative because it's, like, I don't want you to be distracted during your, your date because you did that to me, so I'm just going to fuck off. Like, I'm not going to ask you to be, like, a horrible bitch to me like you were. Like, this is weird. Like, this is very weird. Okay. And then Poppy, and again, like, we're just like assaulting this person with walls of fucking text, like throughout the day. Okay. So this is 949. Um, it's not possible. I said noon, but the possibility of it being longer. Um, and then at 949, Poppy says, okay, then don't tell me noon next time because that's on a concrete time. That's hypocritical. That's a hypothetical time, but it sounded like you're going to be longer, which means that if it goes any longer, you're going to be in bed soon. If you don't, if I don't plan, if I don't play yesterday was the only morning I'd really get to talk to you. I would, I would have shut it down. I barely have been able to talk with you or share how excited I've been about the trip. So I guess just let me know when you're done and how, and I'm kind of pissed off. Have a great day. I love you. Now the real question is, do you go on do not disturb because of Sora showed up or because you were upset with me? Talk to you later. And then at 10 oh eight, we say one final thought and then I'll leave you be as I was planning on doing it on doing. Oh my God. I'll leave you be. I'll leave you be as I was planning on doing because I don't want to interrupt your date. I was really happy last night when you used the tools that we had talked about, but this kind of fucked it all up. The whole point of having concrete times is that I know when you're coming back, but that time was never concrete. It was just a random time that you threw out to placate me. So all of this went out the window. Uh, I appreciate the attempt, but the whole point is to let me is for me to know that you want me and that you're coming back right now and I don't feel wanted. I feel jump scared and I feel upset. You should have asked for a green light and then you should have told me about this yesterday. That would have given me time to come to terms with it and it did not bother you today. But you were vague and I didn't understand actually what what I was actually asking you to do. Uh, I guess let me know when you're done because right now I'm so upset I don't even know if I want to do this trip because hearing about Sora right before I come to see you kind of fucking sucks. So again, we're just kind of like assaulting this person's inbox, right? Because we sent this at like 949 that we're sending again at 1008. And these are like walls of text. And then we even have more. So so before we get to the next one, the couple of things that I want to point out is that we're like, have a great day, love you. And then we send more. And then we're kind of leaning. We're, we're, what What's happening? The way that these are threaded, right? I don't know how clearly you guys can see this, but like, so this is a whole message. 
this is a whole message. This is a whole message. This is a whole message, right? So we're like one message, two message, three message, four message, five message, six message, seven message, eight message. We're like, we're like schizotyping essentially, right? Like if you're mad, you send like a text, you send it and then you're like, oh, and another thing, you stupid bitch. And then you send it. And then you're like, oh, and also fuck you for this. And then you send it. So you're getting like, boom, 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 right? That's how this is going. So not only are we just like blowing up this person's phone, we're saying like, we're, we're like trying to bait engagement. Um, this is something that, like I said, you can kind of see with Keffels, where when something has worked for someone in the past, they're going to try that again. So if I know if I'm at the grocery store with mom and I say, mom, can I get a candy bar? And mom says, uh, no, you can't have a candy bar. We have shit at home for you to eat. And I go, Mah! and I like throw myself on the floor and I start freaking the fuck out. And mom's like, holy shit, calm down. Here's a candy bar. Like, fuck. And I'm like, hell yeah, brother. So the next time that mom says no, I'm going to throw myself on the fucking floor and scream and freak out. And maybe mom's like, you're acting fucking ridiculous. The answer is still no. Maybe when I get up, I'm going to start biting mom. I'm like, ah, you better fucking give me the candy bar, bitch. And then she'll be like, oh my God, why are you biting me? And she'll give me the candy bar, right? Um, maybe sometimes I ask politely and mom's like, here's your candy bar. So in my brain, I have like, there's this goal that I want. I want the candy bar. And then from my goal, there's like 20 different paths that I can take to get the candy bar, right? I can ask politely. I can say, I'll do extra chores for the candy bar. I can say, I did all my homework already. I can freak the fuck out. I can threaten to out mom for having an affair with dad. Like these are all things that my brain is thinking of. They like, there's like a little green light where it's like in the past, this got you what you wanted. And that's how your brain works. You see all these like paths, you have a goal in mind and you see like 27 different ways that you can get to what you want. And that is what this is, plain and simple, is that in the past, what she wants is like a total, a total like, okay, I give up, like a total starfish moment where it's like, okay, fine. I won't see Sora. I'll sit here and I'll talk to you for the rest of the day. You're right. I'm sorry. I should have done this. I promise I'll do better in the future. I'm so sorry. Let me cancel my plans and I'll hang out with you for the rest of the day. That's what she wants. So what she's doing is she's like every single path. She's speed running down, slamming the button and running back and being like, did that work? No. Okay. Let's try something else. We're going to run down and we're going to do this and we're going to see if this works and we're going to wait. Oh, that didn't work. I got to try this now. So we can see that, that, that this is what is happening in this interaction, right? Because we try like... We try like, uh, I didn't really get to talk to you. We didn't respond. Okay, just let me know when you're done then, I guess. Didn't respond. I'm actually like really fucking mad right now. Didn't respond. Okay, well, have a good day. I love you. Didn't fucking respond. Then we're going to try and pick a fight. You Are you going on do not disturb because of your date? Or is it because of me? Don't respond. Talk to you later. Cold shoulder. Doesn't work. Then an hour later, we loop again. A final thought. I'm really, I'm really fucking mad. Doesn't work. Or, well, this is one wall of text, but like, I'm really fucking mad. Like all of our little, all of our little things that we tried up here didn't work. So we gotta, we gotta pull out the big guns, the big guns. I don't even fucking know if I want to come and see you. I don't even fucking know if, if we should hang out in real life. I don't even fucking know if, if like, this is even going to work between us. Like, I can't believe this. So we're nuke after nuke after nuke after nuke, right? So then we finish this up with, I love you. And I hope that you're genuinely having a fun time, but we're not okay. Okay. Doesn't work. 11.23. Now the altar is speaking. I've spent time, I have spent the morning arguing with Poppy on your behalf and then this happens. Not cool, Moth. Please don't quote tweet the quote friend who lied repeatedly and nearly got Poppy hurt. I still hold that this person has uh, no reason to still be around and you sharing your sexual material for the neglect, for that neglect is, neglect, negligent wreck is gross. I will be fronting for the rest of the day and Poppy deserves a genuine apology for this stuff because right now, Pepper and I are the only reason the trip is still happening. One, you don't understand the requests around planning and should have given a better notice and asked for a green light. Two, nothing Amy related, period. That was the agreement and what you said when you ended things with her. That post is a direct violation of this agreement. Please delete the tweet. It was inappropriate. Thank you. Please fix this, Penny. So we have the screenshots here. It says, my friend... My friends, pizza, strap, well, I think there's a party happening. And then the tweet ended up getting deleted. Um, and Amy was tagged in it. So she was pissed, essentially. The tweet is down here, so we'll look at the tweet. And then, okay, so this is at 11.23, no response. Alter again. Max, can you please respond when able? We have a problem. So this is the tweet. Um, Amy says, twink plus hole plus hats. Well, I've never been against hats. Rest 
Rest is just statistically likely given how many twinks I seem to attract by pure, pure chance or whatever. And then Noe quote retreats it and says, my friends, pizza strap. Well, I think there's a party happening. And then Poppy says, you do know that when uh, when this loads, you can see who the person is briefly, even if we have each other mutually blocked. So you can see that this post is unable to be seen on Poppy's end because Poppy has this person blocked. So she literally sought out this post to get pissed at. She already cannot see the post. So she opens it. She can't fucking see it. She figures out what it is so she can be pissed off about it. So that's where we are right now. Okay, that's where we are right now. And then they re-engage at 1230. So again, I want to point out that this is a spiral. And this is something that manipulative people will do, especially when they feel like they're not getting what they want from the people that they're manipulating. They will run down every single path they can fucking think of to try and get somebody to respond to them, to try and get the answer that they want from the person that they're trying to manipulate. Okay, so we can see this happen like in real time. So 1230, Noe responds and says, hmm, Poppy says, and this is the altar, that's why the emoji is there. I need Haley to apologize for this shit and take ownership for it. Pop Poppy is splitting, is black splitting hard. I don't even know what the fuck that means because of her screw ups. I wouldn't be so harsh, but Poppy got double whammy in one morning and I need that tweet deleted as it is in direct violation of Haley's agreement with Poppy. And then this is a screenshot about their like, um, I can't really read that, it's too fuzzy. This, this shit is not okay and it might torpedo this trip. These were massive fuck ups and the day before that we leave Poppy should have been given adequate warning and a green light and that and that tweet shouldn't exist. And then Noe says don't come down. Poppy says what? And he says Haley is an absolute wreck from all of this. Poppy says I mean she kind of dropped the ball hard. I'm sorry uh, she is a wreck but she did this to herself. She uh, she was asked for very specific requests and she broke both of them. So <clears throat> this is right before they come down for the trip. So they're leaving tomorrow. The trip is supposed to be like the 20, I think like the 22nd to the 25th. Um, so th these are the tweets that we saw in the thread earlier, right? So we have an explicit don't come visit us. Us. Don't come visit me, whatever the fuck. Um, and so what we've done here up to this point is we have done our manipulator nuke. We have tried every single fucking thing that we can do to get this person to respond in the way that we want. And now we have this consequence of they don't want to fuck with you anymore. So what are we going to do? Are we going to bite it and just move on? Or are we going to try and manipulate to get what we want? Let's find out. Um, so Poppy says, I still want to see both of you. Don't be like that. And he says, I don't think this is going to be possible. And Poppy says, what isn't? And then Noe says, uh, it's constant breaking stress in the body and the mind. Uh, Poppy says, we're still coming down. Stop. Noe says, at this point, it has to stop. Poppy says, listen, this can be fixed, but I need help. Can I call, please? And he says, no. Poppy says, why? Please, I'm trying to fix this. Please don't shut me out. I'm still coming tomorrow. Please. Noe says, fixing what? Poppy says, the situation. Noe says, there's barely anything there. Uh, Poppy says, that isn't true. We love here. We love her. Noe says, it is true. Poppy says, Max, stop, please. This hurts. Noe says, I know. I'm sorry. Poppy says, no, stop. Uh, Noe says, I really wish that I didn't have to do this either. Poppy tried to call. Poppy says, Max, please. We need to see you. See Haley. We need to fix this. Noe says, I don't think this is, I don't think it will go well at all. Poppy says, she didn't go by the agreements. We do. Please, please just listen, Max. Please listen to us. It will be okay. We are just dealing with Poppy and trying to fix things. We are still coming tomorrow. Noe says, there's far too much resentment, stress, fighting, and possessiveness. Poppy says, this isn't possessiveness. Uh, Noe says, it's not something the body can handle. The body and mind can handle. Poppy says, we just need people to hold agreements. Please, please listen to me. Noe says, we tried and were instantly criticized for even trying. Poppy says, no, we didn't. Your try was good. It just needs work. Please. And he says, we're chastised for attempts. Every time we attempt anything, we're chastised over and over. Poppy says, that isn't true. And we have celebrated your success. Please listen to me. It's Pepper. No one else, just me, please. And again, these are individual messages. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight messages. Yeah, I know. We can't lose you, brother. She is my mom. Please listen. Give us another chance. The DID shit makes this like really fucking hard to follow as well. But, you know, you know. Uh, no, he says, Pepper, I'm sorry. I'm so very sorry, but we can't do this any longer. Uh, Poppy says, please, we can fix this. Please, crying emoji. Don't. We love her. Please let me fix this crying emoji. No, he says, I don't think there's any way to fix it. It's too broken. Poppy says, please listen. It's not. No, he says, it is. Poppy says, it isn't. You're just being protective. Please let me talk to my mom. Please. She is my mom. Let me talk to her. No, he says, we're both here. Poppy says, mom, please don't do this. Please let me call. I want to talk and fix this. 
God, this is so fucking terrible to read. Noe says, I have to do it, kiddo. Uh, Poppy says, no, please, we love you. Are you breaking up with Poppy and Penny right before the trip? Please don't love stop. Please, I'm sorry I fucked up, but hear me out. So remember, we were really, 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 really fucking comfortable nuking the shit out of this. Like, fuck you. We're not thinking about coming because of the way that you behaved. Like, you're being a bitch. Like, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. And then they're like, okay, don't come. We're going to break up. And then it's like, please. <laughs> please it's like we can see that the manipulator tactic like totally fucking backfired super hard and now we're like oh god please okay um so no says yeah i'm breaking up with you both i need to go back to normal i need to fix myself i need to be okay i need to not be stressed all the time poppy says please listen to us no he says i can't i can't do this try to call again Haley, please don't do this we can fix it we are sorry no he says it's over i do love you what Love is left here is so broken and shattered. Poppy says, love, please. We can fix this. I'm coming to see you tomorrow. No, he says, no, we can't. Poppy says, I can't even refund the hotel now. Please give us this weekend. We can fix this. Please, we beg you. Talk to us. We overreacted. It was too much at once. Please, please. No, he says, you didn't. You reacted like normal. I fucked up. I fucked up again and again and again and again. Uh, Poppy says, stop. It can be worked on. Please talk to us. Stop shutting us out. No, he says, anytime we try to talk, we just fuck up again. Poppy says, we love you. No, there have been dozens of successes. No, he says, and hundreds of fuck ups. Poppy says, no, stop. Please listen. I know you are upset. No, he says, I'm more than upset. Poppy says, but we can't lose you. No, he says, I've been more than upset. Poppy says, so have we, but you promised you would stay. You said that you wanted us. Also, like, the another minute, you promised that you wouldn't leave me. You fucking pinky swore that you wouldn't leave me. I know that I fucked your brother, but you told me, you vowed to me that you wouldn't leave me. Also manipulative, right? So we have, like, a bunch of this going back and forth, like, th this is, like, a big fucking t dump of logs of, like, please... No, please, no, please, no. So that's all this is. So Poppy uh, tweets, I fucked it up, I fucked it all up. I lost the girl that I love and then post that she's blocked. Okay, so this is from the 21st as well. Uh, so this is Zena's involvement. So they started fighting at like 10 o'clock in the morning. This goes all the way to like one o'clock in the afternoon. So this is Xena, and this is at 1 o'clock. So this is after shit had kind of already popped off. Um, no, he says, I'm sorry, I can't do it anymore. I can't let your relationship suffer either by waiting until you pull the plug. So we're doing it. Xena says, what are you talking about? No, he says, it's over. I just can't handle it anymore. Xena says, I understand your stress to address the stuff from above as far as letting my relationship suffer. That's not really a choice you can make, nor would I ever pull the plug. I've never advocated for that. Is there anything that I can do? Everyone, including myself, was looking forward to the holiday with you. And he says, I don't think so. I'm so burned out, stressed. I keep breaking. I don't think that I can last until a therapist can try and fix me. Um, Zena says, I think that there are ways you struggle, but you're not as broken as you think you are, blah, blah, blah. Um, Zena says, as far as the rest, I think that's something that we can talk out. No, he says, I don't think there's anything to talk about. Zena says, why? No, he says, I've been getting trauma responses from just talking to them and interacting with them more, like just uh, the act of sending them messages are making my hands tremble. Zena says, trauma coming up is really hard in new relationships and it's something that is pretty normal for new relationships. Essentially, we're doing like the therapy talk. You know, we're kind of being, we're playing like good cop, bad cop here. We're playing like good cop, bad cop, essentially. Zena's being like the good, the good cop here. So these are actually pretty boring. It's just kind of rehashing the same thing, like defending Poppy's actions. They panicked in true BBD fashion, but all the, all that happened was messages. You can mute them and talk to them when they're done. Um, you can also hold your boundaries. And then Noe says, my boundaries get trampled repeatedly. Zena said, did you tell them to stop messaging or mute them? She said, I have before. Then I just get guilt tripped. Uh, guilt trip messages of them being sad and missing me more. So in like the fucking berserk messages that Poppy sent earlier, like, yeah, it is an option for you to mute that, right? Or say like, shut the fuck up and I'm not responding to you right now. But when you open your phone and you have like 400 fucking messages about, I love you. Fuck you. You're a bitch. I would never do this to you. I'm thinking about not coming. Have a good rest of your day. I love you. Like, you're still going to open that and be like, what the fuck is your problem? Like, even if you mute it, even if you're not looking at it, even if you go on with your day, like, there's still, like, there's still fallout from all of that behavior, right? So, <clears throat> BPD literally changes how the brain functions and perceives things. It's hardwired to think that they're abandoned every second, even, it, even with me and I've been with them for six to seven years. Again, those are their emotions and you are not responsible for them. The thing with BPD compared to regular people is the capacity of the range of emotions is much larger than for others. And that goes for all of them, happy, sad, anger, all of them. So we're basically just being like, sorry that Poppy freaked the fuck out. It's just the BPD. So they just kind of go back and forth. Um, honestly, things would be even less stressful here. Her reactions are better, well regulated. We're kind of downplaying the explosive shit going on. Um, you and Poppy have a very rare mental health issues, but nothing is ever permanent. And people do make improvements and work on things. There's a reason Poppy is a counselor. She gets to help people with that journey every day. 
So essentially we kind of like, we're doing like, oh, you know, come and hang out with us, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. These ones are like not as fun. So Noe says, how does anyone even have a remotely enjoyable time after this on the trip? Zena said, the goal uh, is to get time to see you as a person and you'd be surprised. Noe says, what if the trip happens and then it's for nothing? Zena says, so what? At least we tried. We just want to see you. Noe says, okay, I'm just terrified. Zena says, I know. Noe says, I don't think the trip will change anything for me. Zena says, I think you grew up with some really toxic people and never wanted to get better. Uh, but Poppy, but that isn't Poppy. She literally does this kind of therapy that's equivalent to speed running in video games. She always has done her best to keep trying and keep working and she has made huge strides. Um, blah, blah, blah. Everyone, myself included, it's up to you to decide if you want to try. It's really your choice. And he says, if I give this trip a chance, it changes nothing for me. That will only make it worse. And then Xena says, what am I even arguing here? Nothing can get worse from here. No, he says, I mean, if I give up hope from this trip and nothing changes, how can that not make it worse? Uh, Xena says, there's a lot of emotional prep, blah, 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 meeting in public. And then Noe's like, okay, fine, I'll try. Okay, it's your choice. Um, I don't know how we can try the trip. I'm really tired and worn out. Zena's like, go to sleep. Yeah, check when you're awake again. Um, I'll get us ready here. We still need to finish packing. She says, okay. And then seven hours later, they have their conversations like later in the evening before they decide to go and um, meet officially on the trip. So something that I think is important to mention is the kind of therapizing language. Um, we saw this a lot in the video that we watched at the beginning. Um, and it's it's just like advanced like gaslighting. It's like advanced gaslighting tactics where it's like, she's a therapist, like she knows what she's doing. Trust us, like we know how to work through this. We know how to, how to fix you so we can be in like a productive relationship together. It's very odd. It's all very fucking odd to me. With people like this, the problem is, is that when you have somebody who is manipulative like this, there isn't a right answer. The only right answer is true and utter, like contingent free concession. That's the only thing they want. That's the only thing that they'll accept. Okay, unless you're literally like, okay, I'll be your slave. Like, it doesn't matter. There isn't a right answer. Like, you could have muted my text. That you would have been matter. You could have told me to shut the fuck up. That would have made you matter. Like, there isn't a right answer, uh, which is the thing that's really fucking hard with people like this and why I don't think that anybody should fuck with people like this. If people behave like this, it's like an immediate act. It's like, goodbye. Like, we're done. There's literally no reason in the entire world I would ever want you in my fucking life if this is how you act. When your ultimate goal is, like, total concession, there is no right answer. Um, other than, yes, I'll do whatever you want. There is no right answer. It doesn't matter what you do. It is the wrong thing to do. Um, and in my opinion, it's very evident by, like, their engagements that this is true. Shall we continue? Excuse me. Okay. So, <clears throat> we just finished these conversations. This is in the morning. Okay, so this is in the morning. Um, we had our little, our little thing, our little kerfluffle. And then we've decided that we are eventually going to go on the trip. Okay. So then we have, uh, okay. So seven hours later. So again, their sleep schedules are like backwards. So went to bed, woke up. Now it's seven hours later. It's nine. It's nine o'clock at night. Poppy says, good morning. And he says, good morning. Poppy says, thank you for re-adding me. I don't know why you did, but thank you. Um, I don't know if this is appropriate, but I love you. And I'm sorry for me. And then no, he says, I'm sorry for me too. <laughs> Based. Poppy says, uh, apology accepted. Um, do you still want me? And he says, I don't know what to think right now. And then Poppy does the sad emoji and says, that makes sense. It's okay. I still want you. I love you. Just so you know. And then the altar says, me too. And it's this little pepper thing. And then I know offers a hug to Peppo. Pepper, I'm sorry for me. I'm sorry for me, kiddo. Pepper runs over for hugs. Runs over for hugs. Uh, I love you and you can't go. You scared me, but I accept your apology. Squeezes you tightly. Hugs you tightly. Mom, are you okay? No. I'm sorry. Hugs again. Can I help? I don't know. Sorry, little spider. Hugs you and kisses your lips with a peck. I could pet you. You guys, please. No, oh, please. Stop making me fucking read this. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened today, but I will try and fix it. Mom, it will be okay. Mistakes happen. We'll figure it out. No, he says, yeah. Poppy says, you are our family, and even if we crack a little, we can still fix it. Love is glue. We are broken, but we crack. We fix each other until eventually it becomes something beautiful. Plus, you get to hu you get hugs tomorrow. And then 9.30, conversation with Xena. Um, Hi, I wanted to check in with you. No, he says, I'm not great managing Xena. Nods, try to take it easy. Remember, use your breathing. If things start to feel like a lot, you can help your body calm itself that way. Are you so cool with meeting up this weekend? Um, Noe says, yeah. Max is trying to hold everything together. Zena says, got it. Thanks for checking in. Noe says, of course. 
Zena says, also, it's okay not to respond or tell Penelope that you need to stop messaging back while you're at work. I'm just giving you a reminder because I know that everyone is anxious or scared. Blah, blah, blah. No, he says, I'm, it's, I'm simply some combination of Max and Haley. I don't know what to do or what to feel right now. Uh, Zena says, then listen to my suggestion. Or then my suggestion would be uh, to focus on you, listening to calming stuff while you work, try to be intentional with your breathing, you know, doing that kind of shit, whatever. No, he says, I hope so. Um, and then so we're back to the conversation with Poppy. Um, Poppy asked, uh, we get hugs tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. And then Noe says, I do, yeah. Poppy says, if you want them, if you don't want to hug us just to be, you don't have to hug us just to be clear. I just love you. So does Penny and Poppy. And then the pepper, peppermint, Miss Haley, if you were being a nuisance, please, if we're being a nuisance, please let me know. We can go if you like. Noe says, we're driving. Um, Peppermint says, understood, Miss Haley, my apologies. And then Pepper looks down with a troubled face. I don't know what altar this one is. Sits down far away, just giving space. Pepper hugs mom, unsure of what to do. <laughs> okay. Just had to get that out of me really quick. Noe says, hugs back. <laughs> Peppermint says, Miss, is there anything that I can do to help? Otherwise, I can focus on packing. No, he says, please focus on packing. <laughs> I just love the, I love you. And it's like, yeah, I'm so excited to see you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> sorry, this is serious. So do you still want us to come there? I'm imagining that this altar has a British accent. So I think I'm going to do a British accent for the one. So, Miss... Is there anything that I can do to help? Otherwise, I can focus on packing. Like, I'm imagining this is like a little Oliver twist. So do you still want us to come then, miss? No, he says, yes. Are you with... As you wish, miss? Curtsy. <sighs> I don't know what altar this one is. Looks up a bit confused, but looks down again. <laughs> Noe sits beside Poppy and leans against her. Oh, this one is Poppy. Okay. Leans next to Haley. I. <clears throat> sorry. I'm going to be in character for these ones. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I. I don't know how to feel. Should I apologize? Be upset? Or just be happy that you're even interacting with me? I never thought I would hear from you again. Rubs my eyes that are red from crying. Poppy leans over and kisses your cheek. No, he, I'm, we're some combination of Max and Haley right now. Everything is just jumbled. Poppy says, I know, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going to happen, but I might be skittish around Max for a while. I have driven Bunny down to my friends to watch her. I need to take pain meds because my head hurts and my eyes hurt. No, he says, I don't know what will happen to you. Poppy says, I know what will happen. I love you with all my heart and I want you in my life. Today has been hard, so I'm sorry. No, he says, it has. I'm sorry, you guys. Poppy says, do you even love me at all? Or is it just gone and resentment now? I will do anything I can to get to you. I just need to know there is something. No, he says, I don't know. Everything is just pain right now. Poppy looks down. I can understand that. I feel like everything got weird. Felt so angry. Now I just want to apologize. I'm sorry for me. I wish I could be the partner that you deserved. Starts crying again. Why did you come and lean next to me? <laughs> No, he says you need comfort. I'm sorry that we aren't much right now. Okay, it, just to zoom out here a little bit. So, in my opinion, I'm reading these messages and it's like, no, he wants to be left alone right now. Probably just needs time to like process and think and like be alone with her thoughts, right? But for some reason, we're like not able to read the room in any meaningful way and I think that when people are like something that manipulative people love to do is they like to like drive somebody to break and then they build them back up. So they feel like they need this person in their life to kind of manage their crisis is crisis. I right. So we bully berate just fucking attack like bombard with messages and then finally they're like fuck you I'm done and then they get in a big fight and then it's like oh my god but you still love me right like we're still going to hang out. We're still going to be friends. Like, no, please, like, don't be upset. Like, here, let me help you. It's kind of like this weird, like, it's like a power play where it's like, I'm the reason that you're broken, but because I'm the one that did this, I'm the only one that can fix you because I understand. And so the, the goal is essentially to get this person to feel like they need you, right? That's kind of the goal with all of this. <clears throat> 
So Poppy says, sorry, I'm not trying to be paranoid. I just do need comfort. Any amount is good. I just wish under all that pain, if you still, I just wish under all that pain, I know if you still love me or if it's just pity at this point. And he says, it's not pity. Um, Poppy says, then what is it? No, he says, we still care. Poppy says, I'm glad you do. I keep oscillating between feeling like I was justified and a monster. No, he says, you're not a monster. Uh, Poppy says, aren't I? Again, like, this is just, like, horrible, like, self-flagellating, like, well, I know that I made you mad, but I'm, like, such a piece of shit. Like, I'm such a bad fucking person. Like, I'm the worst fucking person. Like, Hitler literally doesn't even have fucking anything on me right now. Like, I'm Hitler. And the person's like, dude, like, you're not Hitler. Like, calm down. Like, it's it's okay. Like, you're kind of like, I don't want you to be, like, freaking out my DMs for, like, the next fucking four hours. So I'm just going to kind of, like, bite it and be like, you're fine. Um, is a way to kind of, like, manage their, like, emotional explosion or their emotional turbulence, right? <clears throat> Poppy says, I don't know how. All I do is cause you pain. I'm sorry I came in and fucked up your life. I'll come there this weekend and try to make it up to you as best as I can. Please don't throw me away. No, he says, just be yourself. Poppy says, sorry, myself seems to scare you and upset you. Uh, I would be anything just to not be abandoned by you. I really would move heaven and earth for you. I love you that much. Even after today, I don't want you to go. Uh, I didn't hate you. I can't. That's impossible. No, he says, I can't. I don't hate you. Poppy says, it felt like that earlier. I'm going to be driving for a bit so we can take Bun down to Wednesday's house. I love you and I hope that you still love me. So this was at uh, 11 o'clock. Then at 11.40 we say, I love you. I miss you. Leans into you. I really can't wait to see you. Even after all this time, I just want to see your face and then a selfie and then please just say anything to me. And then Noe says, I don't know what to say. And Poppy says, do you want to see me tomorrow? Again, we're just like punching, 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 punching. Like this person obviously needs like a fucking break just for a second to like think about something or like process or just fucking chill out, right? And it's like, do you still love me? Do you want to see me? Do you still want to make this work? Do you still love me? Say that you love me. Say that you care about me, right? Like it's so, it's so pressured and it's, it's manipulative. It's like, just leave him alone. Just give him a minute, bro. Uh, no, he says, yes. Do you still care for me? I still care about you. Do you still love me at all? Lays head on shoulder. I don't know what to feel. Press his face into you. Oh, but you don't hate me? No. It's okay if you want to. I probably deserve it. We don't hate you. Like, this is, oh my God, this is like such like 15 year old fuck boy. Like, you think I'm ugly, don't you? Oh, you don't think I'm ugly? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> if you don't think I'm ugly, then... Maybe you think I'm cute a little bit? Like, that's like what this is giving me, right? Where it's like, do you love me? I don't really know how I feel. Oh, but then you must think that I should kill myself in a video game. Well, no, I don't want you to kill, kill yourself. Oh, so, okay, so maybe you do love me like a little bit. Like it's, no, oh, it's just like, I don't, I don't have like the, the words to articulate it at this current moment. Maybe it will come to me with time as we continue to read these, but this is, this is like the the manipulator riz. This is like the gas me up riz where it's like impossible. It is impossible for somebody to like sit there while you're just like, I should just like murder myself in a video game. And you're like, no, bro, don't do that. And it's like validation that that person cares, right? It's like, you're going to get that validation by any means necessary, right? <clears throat> Poppy says, just if it turns out that you don't want me, please don't side with Melina. Max, this is so hard to believe. Um... I still haven't figured out who Melina is. I think that's like her ex. I think it's Noe's ex, I think. Um, I don't even know how to feel about earlier. I'm not saying that aggressively. I ju legitimately just don't know. You scared me. I thought you wanted to hurt me. Noe says nobody wanted to hurt you. I know, but you still scared me. I don't know what to do with that. We don't know either. Uh, but I also know that you are needed. Just please don't hurt her. I know you don't have emotions, but I do. Noe says I can't. Uh, they can't hurt me. Noe, uh, Poppy says, but you can hurt me. I'm not worried about me hurting you. I'm worried about you destroying me. I'm not trying to cause conflict. How do you flip this around to be like her hurting you? How the fuck do you flip this? This is like fucking top tier. This is top tier shit, bro. Um, I'm not trying to cause conflict. No, he says, I don't see conflict. I just need to speak to that. Penny is too scared to front anymore. No, he says, we're sorry for our part in that. Poppy says, I appreciate that a lot. I don't know. Um, about her, she's been silent. No, he says, I hope that she recovers. She is very sweet and loving. Abby says, Babu was until you re read it us. She was trying to fix everything, trying to control her, angry. I haven't seen her like this. I love you. Getting back on the road. Be safe. Poppy says, I'll do my best. Just please be here when I get back. And tomorrow when I get I get there and you wake up, please come to see me. I'm so sorry. I am so needy. No, he says, I will see you tomorrow. I'll be here when you get back. Poppy says, home safe. No, he says, good, good. Poppy says, can I hug you? No, he says, yes. Leans forward and hugs you tightly. Hugs you back. Can I kiss you? Oh, no. Please don't make me read sexting messages. Please don't make me do this. 
Noe leans in and kisses you softly. <clears throat> Poppy kisses you back gently. Hand moves to your cheek. Looks into your eyes. Leans forward, kissing you again. Please, don't give up on you, me, or us. We both had a really bad day. But we get to see each other tomorrow. And if you still want me, I didn't cancel the tickets for January. I haven't done anything other than delete things from Twitter. No pressure. I just wanted you to know that despite my overreacting, I didn't burn anything down. I need to leave the door open. Even if I'm upset, I could never do that to you. I didn't even take off the ring. I couldn't. I didn't even try. And he says, the ring's still in our hand. Poppy says, you didn't take it off? No, he says, we did not. Poppy says, I imagine you would have thrown it across the room. No, he says, neither of us were angry. Poppy says, Max felt like it. it. Max felt like it. I didn't think you were angry, just anxious and never mind. This should wait until person. No, he reiterates, neither of us were angry. Poppy says, I know. But Max was aggressive towards Penny in a way that really hurt her. It just scared me. And he says, sorry for that. Poppy says, I'll say more later, but please know she really did want to fix it. And that she just wanted acknowledgement for what happened. Nothing more. Leans in to kiss you again. Noe kisses you back. Poppy, can I ask a favor? I deleted everything I posted. Noe says, question mark. Poppy says, this might be pushing it, but can the Amy quote tweet please be deleted? It's still appearing in my feed. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes against everything we agreed to. No, he says, fine. Bro, we finally resolved the conflict. We're finally, like, fucking italic sexting again in, in fucking Discord. And then we're like, also, by the way, can you actually delete that tweet that I started a fight about earlier? <laughs> Damn. Poppy says, thank you. I'm not trying to be a bitch. It just really fucked, uh, fucked me up and brought up a lot, of, a lot of scary stuff for me. Looks down. Anyway, thank you again. It means a lot genuinely. No, he says, hope it helps. Poppy says, it did a lot. As both an act of care and a genuine act of good faith for this weekend, we both black split, and I'm really sorry for my part. I should have handled it better myself. It was just a lot all of a sudden, but that's no excuse. I love you so much. And then Pepper says, me too. Um, we love you a lot, mom. Is it okay if I still call you mom? And then she says, you don't have to be my mom. And then Noe says, if that's what you wish. And then Poppy says, what do you want? And Noe says, I don't know. Poppy says, you don't know about me after last night? I thought that we were okay. And he says, we're extremely fractured and thinking it's difficult. Feelings are out of touch. Hugs, mom. It's mostly automation. Poppy says, even still, I love you. And I still want you as my mom. Okay, so I, I'm kind of over this. Okay, so we're just saying sorry back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. God, who texts this much? I don't even text this much. Okay, so we have like 3, 12 a.m. So we have like this big fucking thing. Love, I don't think this is just a persistent situation. I think you're dealing with a lot of trauma at some point. If you figure out, let me know because uh, it would really help if we had the same goal. I know what I want to come out of this weekend. I'm really hoping you want the same thing. We keep playing it out the same cycle again and again. And I don't think it's because we're bad people or we're stuck. I think it's because we keep triggering each other's trauma and you have to figure out how to stop. And you have to figure out how to stop. We keep triggering each other's trauma, but you need to figure out how to stop. Interesting that... Uh, Poppy doesn't have to figure out how to stop. Um, I'll stop bugging you with questions. I'm just scared. I'm not saying that to guilt trip you or just hurt. I'm just saying that because uh, I don't know what to do and I don't know how to re get reassurance. So I just have to take that that you have re-added me because there is hope. I love you. And then Poppy at, sent that at 312 at 333. We're probably going to have to leave in an hour or two late because of everything today. We got a uh, little done, but we're still packing even now. No, he says, okay. Poppy says, do you really want to see my face? No, he says, yes. Poppy says, why? After everything that I've done, why? even giving me a chance. I'm not trying to look uh, look a gift a gift horse in the mouth, but I don't understand. You should hate me. And then Noe says, I don't hate you. So again, we're doing this thing where it's like the, the constant fishing for reassurance when Noe's already like conceded like with as much as she possibly can with like, yeah, okay, fucking fine. Like I'll hang out with you. Just please like shut the fuck up. And we're still fucking going. It's three in the fucking morning and we're still going. And then... Um, uh, why after everything that I've done? And then Noe says, I don't hate you. And then Poppy says, that didn't answer my question. Not that you have to, I just, I just need to know that there's a very real chance that we still get to be together at the end of this. Not just a fraction, not just uh, uh, like a one in a million. I've been working so hard all week so I can see you. So I'm not trying to be a bother. Um, I didn't mean you wanted to date me again or even want me. I just got excited to be able to see your online symbol again and know that maybe you wanted me. Um, then maybe this morning was just a bad dream. 
And then she doesn't respond and she says, Haley. And she says, yes. And she says, there's no response to anything. And she says, I don't know. And she goes, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I fucked everything up. I'm still coming. But if you said I don't want me, that's fine. I, I'll never try to interact with you again. I wish I, I wish you could tell me how I feel. So we're not getting the answer we want. So we're spiraling again. I'll never talk to you again. I fucking, oh. um, please tell me you're not doing this out of pity. It's not out of pity. So we're literally just looping, 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 looping. And we can just see that, like, Noe is not really, like, engaging at all. So we'll get, like, these walls of fucking text. And it's like, yes, hugs. So sent all this, hugs. Did you read all of that? Yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Good night. Good night. And then we have another fucking one. I wasn't going to say anything more, uh, but not telling the girls I love you is rough. I want you to know that I still care for you, blah, blah, blah. And then Noe says, I care. About what? You all. Then why not say it to Pepper? I'm not trying to fight. And then Noe says, then don't fight. She says, my sister deserves your best, though. They are really, they are really trying. I say that to clarify. Anyway, good night. I just thought I would throw my two cents and then good night. So, okay, so that's it. <clears throat> so eight hours late, or so, okay, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. equals eight hours. So 15 hours of persistent emotional turmoil with few hours of sleep in between. Financial abuse, guilt tripping, relentless harassment. Confirmation of suicidal threats if Noe didn't uh, pick Poppy over Amy, a person who has a minimal contact with Poppy and made attempts to be amicable to her. Notice how Noe becomes more and more distant and short of speech. A therapist would recognize that Noe is becoming more uncomfortable, unenthusiastic, and more dissociated. Uh, the response to this is to step away and properly allow for space for recovery. Poppy is aware that Noe Flake is disassociating, disassociating heavily in these conversations as Noe Flake tells her uh, directly, Poppy keeps pushing. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think that that's like a fair... A fair summation of what we have thus far right thus far we have that so these are the, the the morning of them hanging out okay so this is uh 2 12 22 so this is like the when they hang out good morning offers hug good morning hugs still about the same question mark yes i just woke up and i suddenly missed you not long now and you'll be able to see me Haley. i know uh but are you even going to be there emotionally i mean this is supposed to be a good thing i can try we are finally meeting after all this time. It should be good. Yeah, we should still be. We should still be in love. And I want this. I still want to kiss you when I see you. Nothing has changed for me. Love, please tell me some part of you wants me. Please. This was at eight thirteen, eight twenty one. Darling, I know you're probably busy. I just, I need something to hope for. Emoji, emoji, emoji. Eight thirty. Okay, sorry for bothering you. Eight thirty. Sorry, I spaced out. Okay, it's okay. It happened. Sounds like you disassociated. Probably. Did you read above? Yeah. Anything? I don't know. Please try to know something. I am trying to keep ZZ moving and fighting my own urge to run. I'm spending a lot on this. I need something. I just, I don't know. About me? How do you feel about me? Or how you feel about me? No, he says about everything. Bobby says everything involving me. I'm sure there are things you are sure on. Could you just, just do something for me just as an experiment? No, he says question mark. Bobby says, can you just try saying you love me <laughs> and seeing if you feel anything? Can you just, like, can you just say it out loud? Just say it. You know what I am. Say it, Bella. You're impossibly fast. Vampire. <clears throat> God. Ugh. Um. And again, so these are, like, the full leaks um, of all of these messages. And it's important to keep in mind, again, that given all of this context, Poppy is the one that is claiming that Noe assaulted her by deception. Unless you read these messages backwards, that's the only way that you could get that, is if you thought that this was actually Poppy. That's the only way that you'd be able to come to that conclusion, right? No, he says, I love you, Poppy. Poppy says, I love you too, Haley. Anything, does it feel true? She says, no. <laughs> Take the hint. Holy fuck. That's not even a hint. That's a direct no. Jesus Christ. And so we have all these messages and Poppy is still trying to maintain that she thought that they were going to have like a relationship if they hooked up. Holy shit. If anything, this reads like Poppy like manipulated her into sleeping with her. That's what it reads like. Again, unless you read these backwards, that's like the only way that you could read this. Is it because you were numb? Because it is in or because you're numb? No, he says, I don't know. Poppy cry face. Please say something. Do you have any idea how painful this is to hear from the woman I love? No, he says, yes. And Poppy says, and you still don't care, sits down trying to breathe. You don't even care how devastating it is to hear this. No, he says, we care, there just isn't anything that we can do about it. 
Puppy says, yes, there is. You can dig for your feelings. Try to remember why you wanted me, why you took a chance on me. You can try reassuring me and letting me know that I'm not driving out here for nothing or that I fucked up so bad that there isn't a chance. Sorry, I just need something, something to keep me going. Or am, or am I just going to break up more? Kisses you passionately. Love, please try. I don't know what to do. I'm just starting to panic. I don't know what to say. And then that was, it was at 8.45, 8.52. I don't know how to do this if there isn't any hope. And no, he says, I don't know. Like four months, bro. Like four months. Um, over the internet, mind you. Over the internet, bro. Over the internet, bro. <laughs> Hobby says, if there's hope, you said we had a chance. Sad emoji or stressed. I don't know what emoji this is. I don't know. Um, was that not true, love? Okay, please say something. I, I don't even know if you were here. <clears throat> no, he says, sorry. Uh, Poppy says, don't apologize. Fix it. Talk to me. I don't know how anybody can read these and not see that this person is like incredibly fucking manipulative. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know how anybody can read it any other way because that's all this fucking is. It's just like emotionally manipulating this person into like wanting to want you. Like she said no, bro. I keep disassociating. <laughs> Poppy says, fuck trauma. So the more I want from you, the more the more you're dissociate. I get it. It hurts, but I get it. It isn't your fault. You seem scared to want me, to love me. Did someone push you to break up with me? No, you were being fucking crazy in DMs. That's why. No, he says no. Poppy says, did you talk to anybody about this? No, he says no. Poppy says, oh, then why did I, then what did I do to make you feel scared of me? I don't know, threatening to unalive yourself because they didn't want to date you anymore? Voice message, there has to be some part of you that still wants me. Otherwise, why would you be doing any of this? And he says, a chance, I don't know. Poppy says, the chance to do what? I need I need to be specific. A chance that you still love me? No, he says, maybe, I don't know. Poppy says, man, you are disassociating. Okay, I guess the chance is going to have to do it because I want my chance. Can I just ask one thing? When we get there, can we, pull, can we both please try as hard as we can? I don't want to lose you without a fight. I need you on the same side as me. Is that doable? Can we please fight for us this weekend? Please. No, he says, I don't know. Like... Turn that car around. It's obviously not a thing. Um, Poppy says, okay, let me ask you this. What do you know? No, he says, my head hurts. Like, this person is obviously, like, needs a fucking break from this conversation. And we just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. This is crazy. I'm sorry. Do you want to go to bed? That way you're up when we get here. Maybe that'll help. No, he says, everything hurts. Poppy says, I would take pain meds and go to sleep. Just try to take care of yourself. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Didn't get to shower uh, this morning or finish packing. Well, then go shower, finish packing, do those things, and then go in bed and go to sleep. Nothing is okay. Let's try to make it okay. Blah, 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 blah. I'm okay. Sleep. Okay, I love you. I hope you got your packing done and your shower. We're just about to leave. Can't wait to see you. And then, so this was at 11.19. Then we have one, two, three, four voice calls. 155, 448, 755. No, he says, just let me know when you get here. I'll come over when you're ready. Voice call. No, he says, KK, love you. No, he sends a heart. 50 minutes out, 50 miles till arrival. It said at 925, KK. Um, room 224, let me know when you're here because I have to come and let you at the entrance. Okay, about to head inside. So this is on the 22nd. Uh, this is 1 a.m. So uh, no way gets there at like 9.30-ish, 9.45-ish on the 22nd. So the morning of the 23rd, so 9 or... 10, 11, 12, 1 in the morning, four hours later. Um, oh no, this is actually completely the next day. Just kidding. So this is the 22nd. So almost at o'clock at night. The next day at like two in the afternoon, the 23rd, uh, Poppy says, I think they're referring uh, to this morning when I put my, I put in my underwear, not last night. Um, no, he says, I don't know. Poppy says, uh, they were snoring last night. You okay? No, he says, not entirely. Poppy says, breathe, I'll shower and see if I can resolve it. No, he says, it's whatever. I'm just hungry. Uh, Poppy says, like I said, there's food in the fridge. Uh, what time does the cafe close again? 2.30. It's not that far. We could just run there in a bit. Poppy says, I don't think we'll make it. Poppy says, sorry. Noe says, it's fine. Uh, Poppy says, now I feel bad with a heart. So on the 22nd, when Noe is getting there, so I'm about to leave on a road trip down to spend Christmas Eve with my fiance and my maybe partner. I have no idea how this is going to go, but I'm hoping for the best. Wish me luck. Um, then we say, trip is going well so far, about halfway there. Uh, literally six minutes away from her house and all she keeps telling me to do is go home. I'm exhausted. I have no food in me. I've spent thousands of dollars on this girl and I drove eight hours yesterday just to see her and now I'm stuck here. This feels like hell. 
So on the 23rd, when we were looking at these messages, like they are not wanting to hang out. So it is implied both by Poppy and by Noe in, you know, saying that uh, Noe raped her by deception. That They hooked up this night, the night of the 22nd or 23rd, depending on what time it was, I suppose. Um, and then Poppy is like fucking guilt tripping. Like, um, I now have to leave. Uh, I'm about to leave now on a trip to spend Christmas with my fiance. And then she's like, it was so bad. I spent so much fucking money, so much time, all this other shit. This feels fucking terrible. And then she says, it's over. Um, she doesn't love me anymore. I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere in a hotel room right before Christmas to find out that she doesn't love me anymore. Uh, even though we know that she doesn't love her anymore because they had this conversation before she even went down to fucking see her. Um, I just want to die. Every part of me hurts. I would have given everything, but I guess I'm not enough. And then the bang, bang. What the fuck is this? Okay, so this interaction below was posted during the event. This person in question is now dating Poppy. Okay, so this person says, uh, Poppy is going to get a cage soon. Weird smile. Poppy says, who is getting, or, well, this is the, the altar. Who's getting you a cage? Morg is, uh, getting me one for home, uh, but I'd like one over there with you too. Poppy says, dogs can only have one owner. And Allison says, well, that's not true. And Poppy says, that is absolutely true. I don't share. <clears throat> so Noe posts, this is on December 23rd. So this is after they broke up. And she says, like a shattered stained glass window, assaulted by a rock, the little black moths that lay on the ground, shattered into pieces, pebble upon pebble, we're doing like sad poetry. Poppy quote retreats this or screenshots it and posts it and says, just so the record isn't hidden, I drove, oh, I drove out 400 miles just to get used and then tossed aside. This is the 23rd as well. Um, Poppy says, this came at the exact time I needed it. I'm pretty sure I have been let on for a while. And this is, are you feeling confused or crazy in your relationship? You might be experiencing gaslighting. So now Poppy is like alluding to the idea that she was like fucking gaslighted by Noe. But we sat here and we read through all of this, all of this. It is clear as fucking day to anybody that is not literally a vegetable in a fucking medically induced coma that Noe was not into her at all anymore. She literally says, don't come. Do you still love me? I don't know. Say you love me and see how it feels. Did that do anything for you? No. Like, again, 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 again. Unless you scooped your eyeballs out with a fucking melon baller. There's no way that you could read these and be like, nah, this bitch still wants it. Nah, she's still trying to fuck dog. There's still a chance. This is like the Jim Carrey meme where he's like, so you're telling me there's a chance. That's what this fucking is. And then, again, implying directly that no, we fucking gaslit her. That's, oh, God. <clears throat> and then, why unblock me to this? Um, and then all the alters jump in on this, which is interesting. Stop hiding responses. It is silly. People can see them anyway. Poppy and Pepper deserve better than a broken heart and a dishonest poem hiding shit in a metaphor. Um, this is Penny. Oh, I figured it out. The coin is Penny. I figured it out. The coin is the Penny altar. No, I'm not going to let you lie. Poppy deserves better than this shit. Tell the truth about what you did. You broke a mentally ill woman for fun after your headmate was emotionally abusive to me and you abandoned a child because it was convenient after you sexually took advantage of Poppy to see if you still loved her. The, the, aban the abandoned child is the, the altar, by the way, is Pepper, the child. <clears throat> um, and the only, the only person that was, like, manipulating her into, like, hooking up would have been fucking Poppy. Poppy was like, we're still going to meet up, right? We're still going to meet up, right? Do you still love me? Do you still love me? Hey, do you still, hey, do you still, hey, 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 I'm talking to you. Do you still love me? Do you care about me? Say it. See how it, hello, hey. It's like, I don't know. Um, did I miss anything? You are not a hero. You're the reason my sister can't be found right now. Pepper can't be found in a headspace in the headspace, and it's your fault. We loved you, took care of you, got you a space when you needed it, a camera, even showed you uh, how awful how awful of a person Amy is. Spent nearly a thousand dollars to come and see you, and what did we get? Emotional harm, lots of tears, and possibly a UTI. That goes hard as fuck, dude. I'm gonna use this line every time my wife is like, "We have to go to Costco on a weekend." I'm gonna be like, "And what did I get from our Costco trip?" Emotional self-harm, lots of tears, and maybe a UTI. Okay. Poppy initiated the sexual encounter. Xena was present in the hotel, often in other rooms. Noe Flake broke down, or broke up with Poppy, and according to Noe Flake, was physically barred from leaving by an upset Poppy who clung on to her. Noe Flake was the one, was one against two individuals who do not have her best interest in mind uh, in a hotel room. She was trying to hold her boundaries and stand firm on her knees, but Poppy didn't care. So this is um, obviously Noe uh, says that Poppy barred her from leaving the hotel room. I would believe that uh, truthfully, like whether she was standing in front of the door or like holding, like physically being like, no, like I would believe that 100% just based on the interactions that we have seen. 
So this is Christmas. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I live. Still struggling, but I am here. On the 26th, uh, it is weird to notice a number of people who haven't reached out to check on the safety if they care about me. The one that really stuck is the content creators or their mods. A lot of friends have been silent. This person says, I reached out. She says, I know. She says, interesting. I honestly just never got a chance to respond because I was in the middle of having several breakdowns. That makes sense, especially when they were uh, an FP. I don't really understand what that means necessarily. But like, I love this. Nobody checked on me. I did. And even though you did check on me, I wasn't able to respond. So whatever. Um, so Poppy says, special mention to Dahlia, who was asked for my mental health to block me uh, so we can mutually block and prevent digital self-harm after things fell apart, trying to fix the issue. She didn't, she didn't do it. And then she lied. Because somebody didn't fucking mutually block you on Twitter. That's emotional harm. Bro, you can just block them. Oh my god. Or you could just not be on fucking Twitter if you're having a mental breakdown. Okay, so this is retweeted. Uh, a friend that we trust just reached out and said something that I think is really important. I had to take into consideration. My relationship with at Noe Flake, again, we're tagging this person, like, leave this fucking person alone, was an abusive one. Her poem gives away the abuse and not in the way that she thinks. This was abuse through negligence toward me. She knew my boundaries and the lines that she kept breaking them over and over again. She continued to say thoughtless things uh, that did harm and damage to me and my system, knowing, uh, well knowing BPD and understanding that leaving us was nearly impossible. She regularly made choices to hurt me, even if she didn't mean it. And uh, when one of her own partners lied to her and was causing suicidal ideations for me, she still took a week to decide to break up with that person. Like, I just, I wanna, I wanna have like such a, uh, I want to have such a main character syndrome that I like. Like, say I'm single, okay? Single Malcolm is present right now. And say that I have a girl that I like. And this girl is hot, okay? This girl is hot. She's smoking, okay? She's the woman of my dreams, all right? But she's dating this guy. And I think this guy's kind of a fucking loser. And I'm like, oh my God, you know? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just really, uh, I love this girl so much. I just really want her. And I'm like, Karen, in our relationship, in our friendship, you know, I just want to set a boundary that like, your boyfriend is such a fucking loser. He makes me want to kill myself in a video game. So you need to leave him. You do. And if you don't leave him, you're, vi you're violating my fucking boundary. What the fuck? How fucking fucked up do you have to be to think that that's like a reasonable request? This is literally the fucking uh, uh, Jonah Hill boundaries conversation. My boundary is that you stop looking hot. Come on. Come on, bro. Um, okay. <clears throat> On a side note, I have no doubt she'll get back together with that awful human being, but that's none of my business anymore. Enjoy your relationship with somebody who has the communication skills of a potato. Pot, meet kettle. As far as I'm concerned, they all deserve one another. I try to give this girl love, support, and a family, and what I got uh, was reoccurring negligence over and over again. Someone who couldn't care about my feelings and regularly st stepped on every trigger possible. Not to mention somebody who essentially ban abandoned Pepper, the little girl of my system who called her mom. You guys, what about fucking the abandoned child that lives in my head? <laughs> Oh, fuck me in the ass in a video game. Uh, the joke was that uh, she was never malicious as far as I could tell, which makes it all the more worse because rather than her being malicious, it just means that she was so comically inept at relationships that she nearly stum stumbled into me committing suicide. This is so fucking annoying, dude. This is so fucking annoying, dude. Like, I just... <sighs> The person that is so self-aware that they're like, polyamory isn't for me. Like, I'm too possessive. I'm too clingy. I get too jealous or whatever the fuck. Like, and then, and then you're going to turn around and be like, well, I don't know. She just couldn't handle a relationship. And then I almost, I almost, uh, unalive myself because of this. And it was her fault. And she, oh, okay. Okay, bro. Like, I can, I can. I can imagine the hypothetical person who thinks that they can handle polyamory and then they try it and they're like, actually, I don't fuck with this at all. I'm way too possessive. I'm way too jealous. I'm not going to do it anymore. I can imagine that person. But to be self-aware to the point where you're like, dude, actually, I'm super possessive and I, they're my partner and it's a competition and your partners are my rival, but fuck it. I'm going to do polyamory anyway. What? Say what? So this is something that I think is frustrating at least for me the the kind of autism that i have like i want somebody to make like a three-hour video where i can just get all the information that i need and then be done that's what i want i don't want to have to do it myself i don't care enough so like the chris chan documentaries that are like six hours long i'm like this is perfect this has all the information that i want to know somebody already put together the timeline they have all the clips they have this that and the other thing that's what i want for this but it doesn't fucking exist you guys it's like i had to do all this myself do you think I have, do you think I'm having fun reading sex between like fucking 40 year old people? No. Do you think I'm having fun right now? This is for you. Are you not entertained? 
So this is her messaging Noe's formal partner, former partner or whatever, the one the one that was like horrible and made Poppy like want to kill herself in a video game. Dear Amy, we're going to read this in a really passive aggressive voice, okay? Because <clears throat> I imagine that's how this was meant to be sent. Dear Amy, I hope this finds you well. I know you have been instructed to block me if I write to you based on events at the time. I think it's best after reading this. Please let me explain. From the duration of my relationship with Haley, I have been indirectly harmed and made afraid of her par her partners. <clears throat> and made afraid of her partners? This bitch didn't do anything to you. Sorry. This started with her breaking a boundary of mine and choosing to describe sex acts involving you and Sora as well as her and you and Sora. Did we miss those logs? The reason I have this boundary with my partners is because I suffer from BPD and hearing these things causes me to get intrusive thoughts about those sex acts in a way that feels incredibly disturbing and invalidating due to secondary survivor trauma from a previous partner being assaulted. So my sister's cousin's brother's aunt's uncle twice removes daughter had this issue and so now I'm projecting that onto you. Just so you know. Um, the version of the story that I was given contained questionable decisions, coercive behavior, and poor communication. I had told Haley that I need to feel safe due to these issues, and that request was not met by my metaphors in a way that would sufficiently address my concerns. Essentially, the story and the response have poisoned the well. To be frank, I do not feel safe interacting with you online or in person at this time, and I may never without adequate effort on you and, ha on you and Haley's part. Didn't they break up? Why the fuck would they interact at all? Uh, wait, is there context to this? Is this like... Did she send this, like, after they already fucking broke up? Okay, so this happened in November. She sent this in fucking November. Okay. I attempted to talk to Haley and my fiancé, for Zizi's part, due to not understanding the ongoing part of last night, but my fears were ignored, my feelings fell, blah, 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 blah. I don't fucking care. Okay. I request that you block all four of my accounts on the platform. One, Lady Dubleek. Two, Penny Dubleek. Four, or three, Poppy Dubleek. Four, Xena and Poppy. You can also, I can also block you as well. I can also have Haley give you other accounts on other platforms if need be. I do. I don't think at this point that I can interact with Haley's partners without a slow, measured approach to integration. You are too harmful to my mental health, and I cannot rely on you to take steps to make me feel safe. Nor can I re rely on Haley to intervene when I am hurt. I am so sorry. I didn't get to interact under the best circumstances, but my boundaries exist for a reason. They are the way that I keep my mental health intact and to have healthy poly relationships. That is fucking hilarious. This is how I keep healthy poly relationships. Okay. Uh, TBC. I love Haley with every fiber of my being, and between her and my favorite person, a BPD term. Did you, do you guys have a favorite person? Do you guys have a favorite person? BPD! Witch! You have BPD if you have a favorite person. And only one of my partners has created a situation like this and struggled with these boundaries. I had to take steps to make sure that uh, she and I are no longer hurt. Blah, 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 blah. You are welcome to share this letter with Sora and Asprin, her other two partners, who was involved with that awful story, and the other one who is 20. She is 33. It might also uh, be best if they block me as well. Blah, 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 blah. Sincerely, Poppy Dubleek. As you can see, I was not only fair, but tried to leave a door open uh, for further interaction. The response was Amy lying further and claiming that she wanted to reach out to me and that she read it despite the fact that one, or that A, she ignored the post until the following day. You guys, she literally didn't read it. She didn't respond immediately. She didn't text me back the second that I fucking hit send. She didn't even read it, bro. Um, only had blocked one account and thus had my link tree. Okay, who cares? You can block her. Like, my boundary is that you have to block me. That's my boundary. Literally, you have the block button. You can literally just do it your fucking self. Um, had, to be had to be bothered by Penny to block the others. Uh, was at the time dating the same person as me and could have reached out via Discord. This person has communication skills of a potato and contributed to why November was hell for me. Utterly repugnant human being. I, I just... Again, I'm not polyamorous, so it's hard for me to, like, mentally put myself in this position. But even if I think about this, even if I become my most unhinged version of myself, and I'm in, like, a polyamorous relationship, and my partner is dating somebody else, and that person sent me this letter, I would literally... I don't even know what I would do, dude. I would be like, this person is fucking insane. I would call, like, a wellness check if somebody sent me this fucking message. Like, are you kidding me? You can block me, bro. I, what are you crying about? Like, literally just block me. I don't know what to say. Like, I am not my partner's keeper. Like, somebody messaged me and they were like, your wife was really mean to me. I'd be like, what do I look like? The fucking mailman? Why don't you deliver that to herself? I, it's not my job to babysit my fucking partner. If you have an issue with my fucking partner, go talk to them. Why are you dragging me into this? Especially, again, let's zoom out on the macro level. This is a discord relationship. This is a Discord relationship. 
these people have never met in real life. They live 400 miles away and they like fucking send their weird little italicized texts back and forth like kissing and hugging and holding hands and shit. Okay. Um, to be fair, I know if like did break up with her over this, but she only did it after a week of arguments and discussions and a four hour long discussion with Amy where the chick lied. So <laughs> she, it was a week of bullying Noe into breaking up with this person because you personally didn't like them. Uh, the fact that my safety and well-being was not worth the priority and Amy wasn't cast aside immediately should have been a real, it should have been a red fucking flag. Hey, I don't really like this person in your life. Is that like a sex, uh, that was a sexy moth. Why are we, a sexy moth? Really? Really, you guys? A sexy moth? Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? A moth with a fat ass? Come on. Come on. I fucking hate you guys. I hate you guys. Please, you guys, be normal. I'm fucking on my hands and knees begging. Please, uh, stop making random animals sexy. What's next? A sexy worm? Please. Oh, God. Okay, the last DMs. We are at the end. No, he says, yes, I was under the impression we were keeping texting as the main source of contact. Poppy says, sorry about that moment of weakness. No, he says, it's okay. Poppy says, it probably shouldn't be. I'm sorry for bothering you. I don't want to assume where you are emotionally, but I'm still struggling a lot. He says, I'm stable enough. I don't necessarily know if communication is healthy yet for you, though, or if communication is even desired. Poppy says, it depends on the goal of the communication. You've been clear that you want nothing to do with me beyond a possible friendship at this point. I'm not sure whether I want that or not. Emotionally, I keep oscillating between beating myself up and feeling like there was something that I should have done differently or thinking that I wasn't good enough until the other shoe drops and then I'm suddenly very angry at you for everything that you did and did not do. Uh, I've also come to the conclusion about our relationship, but yeah, all of this is a struggle. I still miss you and I still love you and a part of me is incredibly angry at you. Now he says, a friendship at this point would be the most that I desire. If you don't want that, I accept that decision and I won't ever bother you again. I'm really sorry for how much you're struggling. I know that it's my fault. I would like to say, I would like to say that like this person, this Noe person is actually like pretty, pretty like emotionally like well-regulated here. Like she's not really giving Poppy anything, right? Like there's not, even in the earlier messages, she was being pretty direct don't come. No, I don't want to see you. No, I don't love you. Right? Like she was being very direct, but that wasn't enough, you know? Like, and I don't know, that's always a red flag for me. If somebody is very clearly like, I don't want to see you. And then you like push and push and push and push and push until they're like, fuck, okay, fine. We can hang out. Like that's not on this Noe person. This Noe person is like doing their fucking best to hold their boundaries against like a fucking textbook psychopath who will not leave them alone until they get what they want. It's very, very difficult to watch. I feel horrible for this person. <clears throat> Poppy says, it is your fault. One of the things that I've come to the conclusion about our relationship is that it was abusive. It was abusive due to negligence. And then we essentially got like the this thing that she sent anyway, like, um, okay, blah, 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 blah. We already read all this in the fucking post. At the same time, I thought we actually made a connection. It was just you, it was just you using me to see if you still had love for me. Do you know how much sex with you felt violating and tainting? Tainted? So again, Poppy is the one that harassed this person into coming and meeting up and seeing her in real life. They ended up hooking up. This person very clearly prior to hooking up said, I don't love you. I don't want to come and see you. I don't want to hang out with you. This isn't going to work over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. They hook up and then Poppy's like, you don't want to date me? And they're like, no, I told you I don't fuck with this anymore. And then she's like, well, I feel violated. Bro, in what fucking universe? In what fucking universe are you the one that feels violated and tainted? How? The the fucking cognitive dissonance it takes to take something like this, turn it, flip it, throw it down, and reverse it is fucking insane, bro. Oh my god. I would like to be friends, but I would also like to be more than friends, but you need therapy. You need to do your personal work uh, so this passive bullshit ends. Your trauma is indirect, incredibly destructive, and there would need to be some growth on your end for there to be a friendship. I would hope that it would be possible for more. Uh, I do love you, but you already said that you would never date me again be because of some reason, because you're incredibly fucking manipulative and crazy. That's why. And if you've already put down a line like that, there's no real point in hoping because you've already decided that I'm some sort of monster and that somehow toxic when all I ever did was be open, honest, and transparent with you. And he says, with that, with what I said in the hotel room, hotel room after, yes, I can't induce how awful that was for you. Bobby says, you took a moment of passion and love and you made me feel used. 
I saved that experience specifically for you. It was all cast aside. I always feel torn whether the thoughts came up because a part of me wants it again. I want to feel close to you. I want to hear you say I love you. And another part feels hurt and violated and used. You make me shudder. Uh, I don't uh, I don't know if I ever really knew you because I don't think you ever let me in. I gave you everything and blah, 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 blah. Poppy says I don't, or no, he says I don't, not for you. I only truly understand things from the perspective of my side. Poppy says, Haley, this has been one of the most devastating breakups I've ever had. I didn't drive home because I didn't trust myself, insinuating that she was going to flip her fucking car because she got broken up with. Grow up. Breakups happen. It's part of life. Um, and if you can't handle somebody breaking up with you, don't date people, especially multiple people at the same fucking time. Um, I only know some of what, how bad it was. I know up until that point, I didn't know the parts afterwards. Here we go. <clears throat> Everybody get out your violins. It's been bad. I've been having trouble sleeping. I barely ate the first two days. I would have written about of crying and numerous people come, up, come forward and express that I would hurt myself. Even Courtney expressed on her blog concern for me. <laughs> Courtney blogged about it. That's how you know shit's real, bro. If I had one wish about our relationship, it would be that you take accountability for just how much harm you did. I just have, like, no empathy for Poppy. I have, like, no fucking empathy. Um, because, like, this is all a product of her own design. She's the one that pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And when it broke, she sat there, like, shocked and surprised, like, holding the broken pieces of the clay pot. And was like, why did the pot do this to me? It's like, I, this is a direct result of your choices, your language, the way that you engage with this person. Like, I just have no empathy. Like, I don't care about the woes. I don't. It's all manipulative bullshit. Okay, so taking accountability involves actually working up to a remedy this situation and stop doing this behavior. Like, even now, she's still trying to manipulate her into being like, yeah, but we could date later, right? If you just grew up. And she's like, I don't want to fucking date you. And she's like, yeah, but if you work on yourself, we could. It's like, I, I don't understand it. No, you use me as sex as a litmus test for your feelings. You didn't have to do that. You're also missing the step of accountability where you address it with the other person and see what reparations need to be made. By never resolving conflict, you have left everything in shambles. There are so many wounds that could have been healed. Um, blah, blah, blah. I'm so madly in love with you. You hurt me so badly. Um, pa uh, Poppy says, I still want you in my life. So we're doing this thing again. We sent this at, you know, 1254, 100 messages, and then 101, a couple of messages. I miss you so much. After we just talked about how you were like, this person like fucking assaulted you. I miss you so much. Like all the time. I think about it all the time. No, he says for clarity, I haven't said much because I'm at work. I'm surrounded by two bosses. I understand. Just don't forget me. I haven't. Also, Pepper wanted me to tell you that she misses you and loves you a lot. Miss her too. Don't know if that's appropriate to say that I love her too. It's a different kind of love after all. Bobby says, I think that she loves you that way, but I get it. Message received. Just wanted to let you know. Thanks. You're welcome. Good night. Let me know uh, your thoughts on the stuff I said above. Thanks for not forgetting me. I will. Good night. Um, so this was at 4.25 a.m. 4.35 a.m. Oh, Pepper, Peppermint's back. Yes. Good night, Miss Haley. We hope you can find clarify and resolution in exploring what happened. I hope that you're willing to find a way to take ownership and responsibility for everything so that the system can either find friendship, closure, or you back. Curtsies. Please know that despite the anger and the hurt, these girls still love you. I ask that you respond to the above. You do so compassionately and clearly. Thank you again, miss. <laughs> uh, I did want to fix things. Uh, excuse me. I did want to fix things and work on things. I always felt like a few major issues. Blah. I don't care. Okay. So this is the part where I, this is where I, my heart starts to feel sad. This part right here. I lied about the sex stuff and I'm truly dar sorry for doing so. You were initiating and in my mind, I did still have feelings for you. I wanted to make you happy. I'm not blaming you for the record. I genuinely cared and wanted to make you feel amazing during that. The next day, my head started to clear up more. Zizi wanting to leave, myself having time to think and see how I was reacting to you and the issues kept coming back. I realized my feelings weren't there anymore and I had a lot of thoughts of why am I even bothering? This was a mistake. I tried to force myself to love you, but I still couldn't. I'm so sorry, Poppy. I don't know how I can make things better, even just to be friends. I don't know how I could possibly make up for the shit that I put you through. Poppy has manipulated this person into believing that they are the guilty party because they went ahead and met up with Poppy after, after Poppy badgered them for like eight, nine, ten hours to fucking meet up with them after they picked a fight, after they tried to be manipulative, after they tried to be fucking controlling. And after all that, this person still graciously in as a poor little manipulated drone decided to finally go and meet up with them. They hook up and then she's like, actually, you know what? I'm not fucking feeling this anymore. And then they have the audacity to convince this poor person that they were the manipulative ones in this situation, that they raped Poppy, that she was raped by what? By changing their mind about how they felt? Really? 
Are you kidding me? I can't believe it, dude. I can't believe it, dude. What What are you trying to post a link of? Poppy says, I just want you back. I just want to fix this, blah, blah, blah. I just wanted to love you to make my space easier. You robbed me of January. We promised that we would make it until then. We promised that you wouldn't get up, on, but you did. So I broke my promise. This is crazy too. Like if I, if I tell my wife, I'm like, hey, in January, we're going to go on a trip to Spain. Like I'm so excited. And then we're going to make it to Spain, right? My wife's like, yeah. And then like I murder her entire fucking family and she breaks up with me. And I'm like, I thought you said, you promised me that we would make it to January. You ruined my fucking year. It's like, Sorry that I broke your promise. People can't help that they don't have feelings for you anymore. I don't know what the fuck to say. Like, this is so juvenile. Um, I broke my promise. Then fucking fix it. Like, why are you still fighting for this? She obviously doesn't fucking want it. You're not horrible, but the relationship was for me. And then we start getting mad. We start fucking turning it around, spinning it around, flipping it. Like, look at this. This is ridiculous. 1032, 1039, 1046. 1157 finally at noon the january tickets were already canceled i've been making plans on how to get uh how to still get to my appointment so like look at all this shit that we send this is fucking insane dude this is crazy. i would block somebody like this in a fucking heartbeat if i got one of these walls of text because i didn't respond immediately i would immediately block this person this is fucking unhinged this is fucking unhinged is that the only part of the things that I said that you're going to respond to? And I figured the January tickets were already canceled. I have little help right now, I guess. Uh, I responded to see... I guess respond as you see fit. I would like responses to the things that I said above. And I would like you to take ownership for your shit. There is no hope left for us. It's over and done. Okay, move on. We're done. We've just admitted we're done. We don't care anymore. We're done. Yes, the news fault is that. If it was over and done with, then why re-add me? Why talk friendship? Partially mine, partially yours, partially pennies. No, not most of it is yours. Penny didn't do shit, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's clear with everything above. You've been talking to me on Twitter and that's over with. It doesn't have to be over with. You left me with nothing. I never thought that Penny had to come into a relationship. That wasn't me. That wasn't on me. So they're talking about their alters getting involved. Ugh, system drama. Uh, it's not blameless. Um, I'm just not going to suffer abuse at your hands any longer. Goodbye, Poppy. I never abuse you. Please stop running away. Can we please keep this line of communication open? Why? So can abuse my abuse me and my mental health more? Like, we are waking up. We took the fucking red pill. We're waking up. Let's go, Noe. Yes. I never fucking abused you. You have constantly. You're the one who constantly stepped over my boundaries. And you stepped over mine constantly, too. I've never once abused you. I called you uh, called you out on things that needed to be called out on. Uh, you've used your therapeutic knowledge to belittle and break my boundaries constantly. I have no reason to show up. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. They said goodbye, but we're still fucking going. Go rant about me on Twitter. I've been getting messages about how bad it is. If you're abusing me, I never abused you once. You did a lot. I didn't ever. And then, so these are the tweets that we're talking about. <clears throat> so Poppy says, I was just in contact with my ex-girlfriend. She unironically used Darvo on me. This isn't fucking Darvo. God, this is worse than Gen Z getting pop psychology fucking lingo. This is like somebody who's fucking 40 years old using pop psychology to manipulate people into like fucking them. It's crazy. I think that we should have psychological screening and assessments for people that get psychology degrees because people like this that have a psychology degree are genuinely fucking dangerous. Like this is crazy. Okay, so we're like super mad. I think this is the first time I've ever said this. The first time I've ever felt this. Um, I'm glad for this relationship to be over. Um, I'm done with her because I've never anyone more toxic and cowardly in my life. I gave her everything. She gave me nothing. I was open up front about it. Uh, with my BPD, I struggled a lot. Blah, blah, blah. And then we just keep going and going and going and going. I really wish it showed who bookmarked my tweets because somebody keeps bookmarking mine about my ex and it's very funny. I already know my tweets are being sent to my ex because she said as much. I just wish people could be open and not two-faced with me. Or here's an idea. Log off. Um, wise words from a dear friend. And the wise words are, I don't know who this is from, but uh, I wish I could. Uh, do you really think what she did to me was somewhere in that ballpark similar to rape? Yes, unquestionably. It is coercion at the very least. She literally fucked you under the entirely false pretenses, basically lied about her emotions and used your body to understand her own emotions. It is not a consideration for you. I think that you actually have to be like probably somebody who underwent a lobotomy to consider this to be rape. Uh, so here we are kind of like spiraling into like 
Uh, Noe, say, Noe Flake had sex with me under the false pretense. This is kind of SA. No wonder I feel so conflicted and aggressive about the experience. It makes sense. Amy and Sora were shit at boundaries and consent. Even Haley wouldn't answer basic questions about consent to ZZ. The whole group of them are unsafe. Why are people talking about rape so much on my timeline? I can't speak for anyone else, but I'm pretty sure my ex-girlfriends actually assaulted me via being duplicitous. You know, since I came to the realization about what happened to me, I find myself in a place where I can actually feel calm again. So, Noe Flake is, isn't some kind of monster, but I think she's a deep, deeply traumatized girl, blah, blah, blah. I was raped, I was raped, I was raped, I was raped, even though I was the person that manipulated this person into coming to see me in the first place. One of the greatest tragedies of the situation is that Pepper loses an adult. Pepper is a child and wanted an adult out of our headspace. She asked Haley to be her mom, and as soon as she became, as soon as shit became too complicated, she left this kid to spy, behind, despite Pathways being proposed to allow her to continue the relationship. Bro, please, y there wasn't a fucking child abandoned. It was your child alter. <laughs> and let's be real. Somebody that is this highly manipulative is probably using their, like, if the child alter exists, which press X to doubt, um, is just using this as a manipulative way to, like, stay in touch with this person, to, like, continue to have a relationship with them through the guise of, like, you're abandoning a child. And it's like, no, it's actually just me pretending to be a child uh, so I can still fucking talk to you. But okay. Let's cover consent. My current situation with Noe Flake. Uh, this is where my consent was violated is the I or the informed consent. I was under the impression that we were being intimate as a means of finally being together after four months of waiting because we were both heavily attracted to one another. So essentially, she was raped because uh, they broke up after they hooked up. Is basically what this is. So, conclusion <clears throat> Noe Flake is a victim of thorough psychological emotional abuse by two people who have a history of inflicting the same onto others, including their own adult child. Poppy pressured and dis uh, dissociated, upset, and vulnerable Noe into recanting the breakup so Poppy could visit and initiate sex with her. Noe Flake placated Poppy until it was too much to bear and broke up for a final time, to which Poppy has re. re to which Poppy has retaliated by painting her as a rapist. Noe Flake was promised that she could walk away if it didn't work out. Now she is being defamed, abused, and even further, not only by ZMP, but the community that they've weaponized. Boom! There we go, boys. That is the logs. We made it to the end. So in conclusion, in conclusion, my kings, Poppy has a long history of alleged abuse going all the way back to August of 2022 with Arden, her ex, saying that she was physically and emotionally abusive during their relationship. Willow was an 18-year-old who was invited into a 40-year-old Poppy's house and was flashed and then made to felt weird about being uncomfortable with seeing Poppy naked. We have the allegations uh, put forth by Noe and her experience with Poppy. And now we have all of the context with all of the logs leading up to, during, and following their encounter of sexual nature. We also have allegations of Poppy posting inappropriate pictures in her Discord server with proof that she does not care that minors were uncomfortable with the fact that naked furries were being posted in general chat. We also have Poppy's adult child accusing Poppy of abusing physically by restricting food and emotionally uh, to the point that when she fled the home, she was 80 fucking pounds. And finally, and something that I think is painfully overlooked and glossed over in all of this is Annie Gallagher's defense of Poppy, who is literally a fucking pedophile defender. The person who had 14 and 15 year olds having the ability to post nudes in a Discord server where she allowed maps to be in the Discord server. This is the person that is defending Poppy. A literal pedo farmer, okay? We have combed through every available piece of information that I have been able to fucking find. And trust me, I have the best team of autists looking for autistic information for me, okay? I have the strongest army of autists who are out there digging and scraping for me, okay? This is fucking unconscionable. This is insane. This is very obviously Poppy being manipulative, abusive, all around fucking crazy. This person should never be in a relationship with any other human being ever. This person should be banished from every fucking corner of the internet. And this person should just spend the rest of their life in a padded room alone with their fucking thoughts. What a roller coaster ride. What a roller coaster ride. I said it about apples. And I will say it about Poppy as well. 
If everywhere that you go smells like shit, check your shoes.